All right, perfect. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, back to the uh, terrifying terror known as the Tauntine. Um, I have no idea what the hell we were doing before we got cut off. Um, <laughs> it, oh, yes. Uh, I was, uh, Jahi was literally a microsecond. Um, Noros was a microsecond away from getting his McGuffin. So shall we get back to that, Noros? Yeah, I'm here. I'm ready to go. Okay, uh, Noros opens the door. In front of him is a very large, um, uh, a very large half-elf known, known as uh, Arnal. Uh, he's wearing his customary butler outfit. He is the personal valet of your boss, whose name I have to quickly look up. Let's see here. Uh, Will Will. Um, it's, wow, thanks, th thanks, Jahi. No, uh, it's <laughs> Will Rao. Will Rao? I'm joking. Man, no. that's like a W I L. Uh, no, I'm joking. That's it's, Will Will. It's it's really Will Will Re. Will Re, yes, Will Re. Man, you you really you really testing my faith right now, man. Okay, so <laughs> um, he looks you dead in the eyes and goes. Oh. My lord, it seems that you have a package from your recently deceased employer, and mine as well. <coughs> and oh. he hands you... Um, he somehow, um, behind his back, emerges a, sliver, a silver platter with a very thick vellum envelope on it that has been sealed with the House Lyrandar symbol, and he hands it to you. And then he oh. sits there expectantly. Oh, um... I didn't realize that, uh, that, um, he, he passed away. Should we stop working for the day in remembrance, or...? I don't think he would care for that, sir. <laughs> he, um, busy boss. If, if I know anything about my boss, and I know anything about him, the, the man definitely was a sentimental type, and so he takes open, he takes the, uh... And the letter, he begins to open it uh, and whatnot and starts to read it. What's it what does it say? Um, the letter basically cordially invites you to attend a symposium in Arcanix. Um, it also informs you that you'll be made aware of various new opportunities to help enlighten your prestige and various other little motifs and artifacts from your many years with your employer that give you a bit of a, a little bit of a smile to your face as he seems to make a few you know insulated references and other little you know side comments that bring you back to finer days uh, included is a train ticket first class on a lightning rail to arcanix with accommodations and everything else provided and it tells you to go to live to the Arcanix main library to conference room X6. And that's about the cut and dry of what the letter says. Oh, and included is a very worn, patinaed copper key. Uh, everyone else's leather also has the same thing a worn, patinaed copper key. Um, he kind of reads in and goes. Any particular reason why our employer decided to give me this and not you? I mean, no offense, but you know, like, I'm pretty sure you wipe his ass sometimes, if I'm not mistaken. It's been quite some time, sir, before I have wiped oh, your employer's body. God, I was joking, man. Do you actually wipe his? A well, white. When I he guess. was younger. Oh, not okay. recently. Oh, okay. That's slightly better, I guess. In any way, um, in that case, uh, I'll let uh, can you let one of the nobles know that I'll be leaving out for the day, and I'll make sure to get somebody else to cover this. Um, uh, I can't believe that old man's dead already. I thought I at least had like five more years with him. <sighs> Anyway, all right. If you ask me, sir, it was the heavy drinking. No, it was. No, it was probably the heavy drinking. I mean, how did he die? Do, do we any of us know? That's not a matter that the guild wishes to be discussed. 
Um, I imagine if you go to where the letter states, you will find the answers that you seek. Yeah, okay, so that sounds like I might be murdered somewhere. I mean, I don't know, is the guy, has, was he murdered? Is, was he, like, put in, like, some weird, like, suicide pack? I don't know, man. I'm just, I want to know what happened to the dude. I'm curious. Come on. I'm Go afraid please. that I actually don't know, sir. Uh, <laughs> I'm not privy man. to such information. We are all really out of loop, then. All right then, uh, I'll go get my stuff, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll just start to head out. Uh, all right, um, he goes. He talks to a couple of his guys, lets them know that he's just gonna be like probably gone for like next like day or two, maybe a little bit longer. Um, he leaves in like a list of things to make sure, um, and then he makes his way to the lightning rail. He also um, stops by. The uh, nearby, uh, like, kind of like I guess like a little like nearby like cafe almost or like a restaurant that like people and he like kind of says goodbye to this like waitress that he's been kind of sweet on lately, um, and he eventually makes his way to the lightning rail. Right here, one moment. All right. Now, I believe we have a mystery guest that needs to make their introduction. Olivia, that's for you. Hello? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me, Olivia? Can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can all right, everyone uh, go hear ahead. everyone else? Yes. Yes. So, all right. Uh, go ahead and make your introductions, and then feel free to describe your letter and how you get to Arcanix. Um. Okay, so standing roughly just at five feet, bubbly, uh, a bubbly young, what looks relatively human girl is out gardening. She has ass length uh, hair that's, it's almost green. It's like kind of in the realm of this it's it's almost a natural green like it it hasn't been dyed it looks like this is just how it naturally grows from her head and it is kept in a nice tight braid with flowers all throughout it and she has kind of just flowers and gardening tools on her and she's out in the garden and she's tending to some flowers and some and she's spreading seeds and she's druid crafting you know to cause fruit to blossom and she plucks a, a little fruit and she touches the petal of the flower that it came off of and she apologizes if she hurt it and she bites into it and all of a sudden uh from a very industrial looking building Compared to, like, this beautiful outdoor garden with, like, a gazebo, you know, and there's, like, there's, like, this little covered porch area, you know, this, like, really cute, quaint garden. And it's this very industrial-looking, almost laboratory-looking building. You hear, Oleander, come here, doll. Come, come to Mama. And Oleander perks up, and she like runs over to the porch, and she's like, "Oh, of course, Mom. What do you need?" And the woman goes, "Darling, I wanted to give you this. I wanted to give you something special for your 18th birthday. It's a. Uh, you get to." Uh, Become part of something 
greater than yourself. You will... You're a smart girl, so I think you will figure it out. Here you are. And the woman wearing a lab coat and goggles and, like, boots and, like, gloves hands her a letter, puts out her cigarette, and walks back into the lab. And Oleander holds the letter, and her eyes are the size of dinner plates. And she's just like, eh. And she quickly opens it, and she reads it, and she gets the train ticket and the key. And she is so excited. She does like this little dance where she like spins in a circle. And she goes running full speed into her bedroom at which is it it looks like the bedroom of if a lab rat was the size of a human. If that makes sense. And she she starts packing a bag, and she grabs this beautiful cane. It looks like a tree branch, and it's just about as tall as her. And it's got all these beautiful engravings and flowers covering it. And she's so excited. She's squealing, and she's humming a little song. And she goes booking it on foot towards the... Um, towards the train station. Just with a pep in her step and a song in her heart. Where are you departing from? Uh, can it be anywhere in Eberron? Yeah. Um, which house makes... Which house would be most appropriate for the character concept? Um, for what you are right now? Um, um, I'm gonna PM you what she is. Yeah, sure, give it to me really quick. Uh, if you decided to change it. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, then she's departing from wherever that house... Yeah, okay. Then, which house is that? I have to look it up one minute. Yeah, well, she... It's hard to remember all these goddamn she, names. You know, her mom... Um, her mom, who... Oh, House... Yeah, her mom is a House Vidalis member, and she... And she leaves the laboratory in Foleswood, you know, trekking off on foot to the train station. That's in the Eldine Reaches. Let me just double check. Yeah, there is totally one in there. Um, uh, Foleswood is located right outside of Varna. You are actually slightly north of Arcanix. You will take the least amount of time to actually get to Arcanix. Tight. Okay. Um, now, here's where things get a little interesting. Um, oh, thank God. I was like, oh shit, did I make the fucking map with the goddamn train in it? Um, and I did. Um, I'm activating the train map. Um, the lot of you get on board the train. Um, with the way that we're stacked in Discord, just go from the top. So I think it's Steven, DK, Noros, and then... Uh, what's your character's name, Olivia? Uh, Oleander Thorn. Oh, that's such a fucking good name. Um, and then Oleander, so why don't we take it from the top, Steven? Tell me how you get aboard the train. Kind of keep it really quick, you know, only need about, like, maybe 15 seconds or something. And then we'll run with, uh, with everyone else. Wait, is this a new train? No, you'll, you'll, this is the train that you're getting on board for the first time. That I did the other thing in already? Yeah. So just kind of, right. uh, I guess you're the train transfer. How about that? Okay. So he's <laughs> he's walking from one train and he hops off and he's like <laughs> just kind of giggling to himself as a little money purse is floating in front of him. And he flicks it in the air and clips it to his hand and then puts it away in his armor and then kind of takes a couple of steps looking around, looking for one person in particular, kind of hesitantly making sure they're not anywhere around, and he bolts onto his train. The next train. Okay. 
Uh, DK. Or, Cahollin. What do you do next, Cahollin? Um, is this the train for which we have a ticket for, which, from the letter? Yes. Then I will, um, copy what I saw other people doing, and, um, present my ticket to the Ticketmaster. Uh, well, to the, um, attendants that allow you to board the pr uh, train, and then I would find myself a seat, uh, preferably alone, because I take up a good bit of space with these, uh, cloppers. Um, and I assume I, I just sit there and stare off, um, into the horizon, uh, look, watching the, uh, city while the train is stopped, and once it starts to move, I'm going to stare and wonder at all these strange sights. Even though it looks normal, it's, it's strange to me because, like, wow, everything here looks so bland. Um, okay. And uh, should the Ticketmaster come by, I'm going to be very confused about what he wants. Because, <clears throat> like, I already presented my ticket to somebody. Hey, you got your ticket or what? You can't just lounge around here, buddy. I don't care if you're all horny or anything. You need a ticket. Where's your freaking ticket? I, I presented my ticket. All right. Stamp, stamp, stamp. All right. You enjoy your trip. Don't get into no trouble. I'm watching you. And then the guy walks away. Hmm. Okay. Frowning. No rose. Oh, actually, uh, one thing I have to bear to mention. Um, all of your tickets for your transfers are always on a private rail car. Um, and you notice... Um, that you all have the same exchange point at... I have to load up the Corvair map to remember where the hell the exchange point is. For some strange reason, you are all routed north of Arcanix before going south. So all of your tickets actually end in Passage instead of Arcanix. Huh. Alright. Noros, how do you board the train? Uh, Noros just walks up to the ticket thing... Um, he pretty much just hands his ticket and just walks on the train. He doesn't. Well, um, yeah, no, he's just. Not gonna shit. Yeah, no, he's just going on for business and stuff like that. Uh, while he is like waiting in line, he does like try to chat up with some people who are around him and stuff like that, just kind of talking and whatnot, doing what he likes to do, which is just meeting new people here and there. Um, and All then, right. yeah just makes his way on to the station uh, before it gets on. Everyone has tobacco in there, right? Like They do, actually. Um, I think in the old 3.5 module, there's actually prices for a fucking tobacconist. So, yes, there's tobacco. Yeah, um, he just kind of just takes out a cigarette, lights it up, uh, kind of like making a little spark in between the two of his hands with his sorcerer powers. And he's just kind of waiting for the train to get started before he extinguishes it and gets on there. All right. Uh, so you're smoking outside of the train. Yeah. Okay. Good. You're polite. Um, if you had smoked inside the train, I would have had a very amusing moment. All right. Perfect. I smoke um, inside the train. I want to have this amusing moment actually. Uh, okay. So you start to light up and everything, um, and then you feel a very large burly hand on your shoulder, and you turn around, and there's a dwarf conductor with his hat, and he's like. Hey, can you not read? And he points to a sign that says, No smoking, prestidigitation, thaumaturgy, or minor illusion allowed. Mm, uh, sorry about that. Uh, he takes it, kind of like uh, lifts up one of his shoes and puts it out on, dirt, on the sole of it and kind of just puts the trash into his pocket. Sorry about that. Hey, all right. Thanks for not causing this scene. Enjoy your trip. No problem. And then the dwarf Dr. wanders Man. off. Uh, then he just the goes finds his, finds his seat then. All right, perfect. Now, Orleander. So she bounds off of the first train, looks around, very... This is the first time she's, like, left home without her mom. So she's just kind of, like, looking at all just looking at the train station and all the big arches and she's kind of like idly making like you know how they have those little like flower pot those pots and there's typically like grass or like a little shrub 
She's just ambly, like, bounding to her next train, just, like, casually making them bloom. And, like, spreading flowers everywhere as she makes her way to the next train. I love it. All right. <clears throat> you get aboard your vessels, and nothing of intense note happens until you arrive in Passage. Uh, Passage is a very noteworthy city in Ander. I have to desperately look up its lore really quick for a microsecond. Um, it's the second largest city in Ander. Um, it flanks the coast and is refit with trade goods. There's a certain kind of momentum and calm about the city. It's been two years since the morning. You can see that people are kind of settling back into the groove. The well-worn paths are yet again being worn down by the traffic of feet. And you're making your way out of the train, and you present all of your tickets um, to the nearest conductor. And the conductor looks at your ticket and goes, huh? And then points to a very large silver gilded caboose at the rear of the train. Um, the lot of you approach this caboose at dissimilar times. Whenever you approach, there is no one else around. But as soon as you enter into the carriage, things go black. Time passes. And then, at the same time, all of you find yourselves in the train that is listed um, right here, right now. Ignore the fact that it's like an engine. It, it was super difficult to find a lightning rail that was just one thing that wasn't the train engine. So just pretend that this is the caboose. It's the very prestigious private rail car of House Orion that has been rented on your behalf. You see everyone else milling about, um, having arrived, and I imagine that you all are a little bit discompobulated. Um, the environment is, is, is as it seems. There are little tiny private quarters. The front end seems to be a small lounge with what seems to be booze, um, various little uh, cendric foods, all kinds of uh, uh, various curious accoutrements um, to keep the elite happy and content. Um, but aside from that, um, there's no exterior or blatant demarcation as to what is going on, um, except for one thing. Um, there seem to be complementary copies of the Korenberg Chronicle that have been plastered on the seats in the front. And there are four seats, as are there, and there is a ni nice little bundle of the Korenberg Chronicle with a small note and a chocolate that says complimentary for our elite passengers. And that seems to be the only artifact that has been placed in here that seems to be new. Everything else is kind of standard. Now, um, you find yourselves kind of just ported in here all at once. Um, you can decide where you arrive if you like. Um, I imagine this time now we'll go from the bottom. So, Orleander you find yourself suddenly teleported into this luxurious cabin. How do you react? Ah, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, this is so... Oh, this is new. Ah. Uh -huh. And she'll poke her head out of the room that she's in and look up and down the hallway and go, H Hello? Is anyone else here? H Hello? Oh, hi. I guess I'm alone. She'll pull just like a small, uh, like... What? Uh, take what an inspo it? for how great your goddamn accent is. <laughs> you like my little, my little voice? Oh, thanks. Don't do it like that. It makes it weird. Just keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything, by the way. Oh, it should. You should have vision. Um, let me just double check. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's you should just be gonna. To... Um, can you unpause it so I can move? Oh yeah, my bad. Oh, so one quick thing, DK, you can't see anything. I cannot see anything. Uh, that's really weird because you are set to have vision. Your token is on the map. Oh, I see what the stupid problem is. Hold on a second. <laughs> Is it that I'm stupid? Uh, there we go. Sweet. No, it's the Foundry is really weird with vision ranges. Um, it's okay. It now you can see it, right? Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, anything else, over Leander? Uh, yeah. Can you pause it so I can move? I did. I unpaused it. Yeah, she'll go into the hallway, and she'll walk forward until she sees these two people, and she'll go, oh. Hi. I, I, I just appeared here, and I'm... I'm wondering why I'm not in the train that I used to be in. So you see Garel, he's already reading the newspaper and he's holding it with both hands and then the page just seemingly turns by itself. And then he rolls it down and looks at you and says, Right, how old do you? Oh, I, I just turned 18 today. Um, mm. you're here, this, this big one over here is here, I think there's another one here somewhere, I, I don't know, same as you, I go on, and poof, now I'm here, I mean, got a letter from a friend, and got a ticket, and this weird key, and the key's like floating in the air. She pulls out her key, and she holds it above her head, and she goes, I also got a key. Hmm. Well, it seems like we're all going to the same place then, eh? I guess so. What about you, quiet one over there with the horns and the, the hooves? No, uh, uh, Boris comes out of his room hearing all of you all speak, uh, and he's just kind of leaning against the wall, he's just watching you all. Uh, Cahullin would be... He, he, he didn't even react at all to being teleported. You know, this is weird shit. This is his domain. Like, weird shit is normal shit to him. Uh, he's just looking around in wonder because it's new. Um, it isn't until he's directly addressed that he will respond. He will look at you with a dumb look on his face. <clears throat> uh, take a moment to breathe and then get a face of composure. <clears throat> I am on my way to, uh, he has to take a moment to think, um, wherever the train leads, yeah, he, he, he forgot the location, like, unfortunately, unfortunately, he was not paying attention to all the many stops that they had taken, which probably isn't very smart, but <laughs> he, he defines this exact information as irrelevant. Because he is assuming that he will meet up with his uh, partner. Um, but he will not take out a key. Because um, he's assuming that he's supposed to keep that secret since it's in a block of wax. Um, but he will say, <clears throat> I too appeared here. Um, I, I'm i going to that place that the ticket is sending us to. And he just nods with confidence. Right. What about you back there being all quiet? Uh, no. Hi, uh, I'm Norris. Nice to meet you all. Um, hi, Orlander. Nice hi to there, meet you as well. Yeah, hi there, Orlander. Nice to meet you as well. Uh, you could say I kind of got this after my boss died today, so still kind of processing that. Uh, but you know pretty all right let hmm. me let me ask you a, let me ask you a question because you notice you moving the page without like is that magic is that a magical newspaper like is it just for today's issue or is it more of like a it transforms into whatever issue you want it to be <laughs> Carol just kind of smirks and then you feel a hand brush your face, but you don't see anything. Oh, and he little... just smiles at you. Oh, goes, we're getting. He goes. Oh, we're getting a little personal now. Touching my face like that, I might just have to come over there. Oh, <laughs> you'll hear a voice inside your head. Hey, I have this fun party trick that I do where I oh, talk into people's oh. heads. Oh shit! Okay, hey, hey, buddy, never do that again. That is that is <laughs> loud. That's loud. Woo! Uh, out, out loud, she covers her mouth and she goes, oh, "I'm so sorry. I didn't mean. Did I hurt you? Are you no, okay?" No, just, just, just caught off by surprise, right there. Let's just not do that again, buddy. Okay? All right. 
Okay. Just wow. Blaring in my... Can't overload the senses like that, y'all. You touching my face halfway across the room. Don't know how that happened. You able to just blare in my mind, which might be useful, but a little too much right now. I guess I am assuming that you all are magical, which is kind of cool, but I probably see my magic just a little bit cooler. <clears throat> oh, Cullen is that right? Oh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, and he kind of, like, pretty much just, like, just, like, shocking grasp in his hand. He's just letting all the electricity flows, like, hey, see this? I can make electricity come with my hands. I don't really know money people who can do it like me, but, uh... Cullen do you want... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Cahalan will confidently stand up at the sound of the crackling on your hands and say, I can do that as well. And he will, uh... Do, 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 let me move my token. He will move to a little bit more open area right there. He'll pull out his whip and start a musical performance using his whip, using very sharp cracks. Exactly yes. like the lightning that's on your hand. But that's that's a whip. That's not a that's not magic. And back up to the other side of the chair. Also, Jahi, do you have anything what's your character's name again? Noros. Noros, do you have anything like obviously personal on your person? No, I'm pretty obviously. much just in my work uniform right now. Okay. What's your work uniform entail? Uh, it's just like a button-up white shirt, little like black bow tie, black slacks, black shoes, uh, and a black vest, essentially. Alright. He has like a little like stopwatch on his hip, but that's like, that's just meant to keep time and make sure that things are going to schedule and whatnot. So as you're sitting there like talking about the crackling and all that kind of stuff, let's see if this is high, or why did that do it that way? Well, it's the same roll either way. Um... I guess, what would that be against your perception? Uh, He's going to untie your bow tie. Uh, my perception, uh, it is it is 20, sadly. <laughs> you might have oh, some damn. Pressure. Yeah, I took So you the, feel uh, it happening. Yeah, I took the observant feet, uh, and I... So he just kind of... He, like, sees it, and he just goes, Whoa, undressing me too? Scandalous. <laughs> what? We're in front of people. The second you say undress, she covers her eyes. Uh, no, not actually. I'm not. I'm not actually. Okay, he's like tired. I mean, if that was meant to like show your magic, not a good demonstration. You need to workshop that just just a little bit. You know what I mean? Well, seen. you seem to be more observant than those that it usually works for. Yeah, kind of the curse of being a pilot. You have to have a really good eye. Guess that makes sense. Uh, do you often steal, try to steal things from people as a way to show your dominance, or is it just I'm special? You could say I have um, pride, my sticky fingers. Okay, it's not a dominance see. thing. It's just um, it can be both. It can things, be both. Well, I guess it could, but things uh, <laughs> they happen to just fall into me pockets, as they say. Hmm. Interesting to know. Uh, he kind of steps forward and he kind of takes a look around lightning rail and he's just like, hmm. honestly, yeah, these are pretty nice sticks. Now, I wonder what is there to do? Here, one moment. As you're pondering and ruminating, you suddenly hear a crackling voice over the setting zone intercom in a relatively thick gnomish draw. All right, all aboard! Heading off to Arcanix. It's about a two-hour ride. In about 20 minutes, the snack cart will be coming through. So make sure you got your chain sorted out. All right, everybody? Buckle up. And then you hear the rumble and the static of the train come to life. Noros, you feel a particular affinity for the energy crackling about this vessel. And the elemental... Lightning Braille leans forward. Carry on. Um, Two pretty hours. much. No. Pretty much. Noros just leans up against one of the consoles, um, and it's just kind of sitting in like dragon's feet. And he goes, "So, uh, 
What are you all going to Arcanex for? Uh, you'll have seen uh, Cahalan furiously scribble in a journal the name of the location that he's going to because he's like, oh, maybe since I was asked about it, I should probably record it. So he's going to snap that <laughs> journal closed and say, <clears throat> I am on a mission. Cool. Um, right. Is that the statement? Is that is that the end of the sentence, or uh, is there more? Uh, he's gonna tilt his head. <clears throat> okay. Why does further details matter to you? Uh, no, I mean they don't. I just it's just a really awkward way to end a sentence like that. It doesn't seem to be the conversational type. No. I, would you Would you reckon raised by wolves or bears? What do you think? My money's on wolves. Seems like a very like alpha guy. I mean, I wouldn't think either way. Look at his legs. Oh, that is true. Mountain goats. Do you think he <laughs> eats tin cans? <clears throat> I don't consume those things. I am... Oh, he, you, you he's hear that? Not, he, <laughs> he's going to make a face when he says, Normal. You, you don't consume anything that normal? Or are you normal? I, I'm confused by the <clears throat> wording of that. I am fey. My normal is not your normal. Oh, okay, so I am thinking raised by bears then, if that's not normal. <clears throat> He's gonna, um, you, you don't see it, like, because to y'all, he's bare-chested. But he's gonna uh, wipe his hands down to the front of his chest, and a metallic ringing shows down. And wherever his fingers trail along, um, the shadowy form of plate mail shows up. And he says, I'm an educated man. I was a college student, you know. It just... Then he's gonna scratch his head, um... A bit shyly. It's been a few years since I've done my studies. Have, have you been in the forest being raised by bears? <laughs> he's gonna get, give you a very <laughs> withering look. I'm sorry, no. I'm sorry. It's, it's a joke. I'm merely messing with you. This is just yard talk. What if, so, you're here for a mission, can't disclose any more details, hush ups about it, Fey man, I got you. Uh, he points towards, uh, how do I see your character, Steven's name? Garel. Garel, Gar Gar I think I heard it earlier. Garel. Garel, sorry about that. We'll, we'll work all that a little better. What about you, my good friend? What are you going to arc next for? Uh, I'm here to help a friend. Yeah. Oh, a kind-hearted soul. Interesting to see in these times. Especially ones that try to steal my bow tie. I wasn't trying to steal it. If I was trying to steal it, I would have it. Oh, okay. My apologies. Let's see if that changes by the end of this fight. About the end of this trade yard, if I still have all my belongings on me. And then he points over to Orlander and he's like, And you, freshly turned 18 on the first adventure of your life, I presume? It's a birthday gift. My mom sent me on this trip. Ah, I knew it, told you. Birthday right. gift, mom sent you on the trip. Listen, if someone in the forest offers you an apple, don't eat it. I assure uh, you. Don't worry. And she pulls a she pulls a seed out of her pocket and she casts Druid Craft on it and makes an apple bloom and bites into it. And then she go and you can hear her whisper, I'm sorry, to the little plant. And she goes, I, ha I have my own apples. Ah. Uh. That was a joke, but she took it so literally, I am now a little scared of you. Would anyone you are, else like a treat? I will not take apples from strange children on the train. Thank you very much. Not a child. I'm 18 now. You I'm are a adult. child. You uh, are an infant. Well, I wouldn't say infant. I'm just a couple years older, but definitely still a child. <laughs> Listen, when My I mom was calls me a sapling. <laughs> Right. Is your mom a part of a forest cult? Question? No, she's part of House Vidala. She just really loves her garden and her gardening puns. Oh, a noble. I did not realize that I was talking to that. Uh, oh, well, that's good. They just sent you here alone with no adult supervision? Well, I'm pretty good at, um, what's the word? defending yourself well they think i'm just swell and my mom thinks i can hold my own so oh, I, mean, I hey, agree with her 
I mean, hey, who am I to judge and whatnot? All right, kid. Uh, well, why are you here if you're asking everyone? What's your story there, friend? Oh, my boss died, so I'm now doing this thing for him and his will, I can only presume. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. And she makes she makes a calla lily appear with druid craft, and she hands it to you. Oh, thanks, kid. I mean, it's all right. I didn't really know the guy that much. He was just my boss. Come up, told me, oh, you're doing good sport. Which is really weird for an employer to say to his employee, ruffle my hair sometimes, especially when I was younger, which was awkward at best. But I mean, like, I mean, it was a uh, whatever thing. He was a cool guy. Just uh, disappeared a lot. Never knew where he was. Uh, Tommy actually had to fly, though. Strangely enough, uh, one of the main reasons why I accidentally kamikaze into an elemental storm, which... Not a fun experience, if I will say so myself. You did... I'm sorry, what now? Oh, I, like, flew a spycraft into an elemental creature to blow it up with me. How are you here? Don't know. If I'm honest, magic, I think, is the main reason, right? And he kind of, like, gestures to, like, kind of, like, around his upper body, his face, and points specifically to his scar. Like, this should not be as good-looking as it still is. Probably even better after the accident, right? Good-looking. Yeah, listen. If all of the girls at the bar who say, and the old women who say I'm a sweet-looking young man have anything to say for it, I think I can uh, speak for myself in that regard. Now, lower half, chest and downward, definitely a little bit of a horror show. A lot of scarred. A lot of scarred there. But still, it kind of weirdly hot. Uh, and he hears a knock on the door, and he's kind of going to kind of look at it. And he will give uh, 24. Garbage. Um, Advantage for you. Oh. Kahalan would like to present a 22. small notepad with a poem in Sylvan to the druid girl in return for an apple. Um, she will hand you an apple. Do you read Sylvan? Um, I haven't picked my languages yet, so I'll just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid fuck. I have four languages to pick, by the way. <laughs> What's okay? First, um, you will all be crucified for this. But go on. Oh. Well, so, no, nobody told me what the languages they picked when I messaged in Discord. You know what? This is everyone else's fault. You're completely right. Now, um, I have a perception check from Noros and Gura, but I do not have one from Orly and or and Kahalan. Oh, Kahalan is in there with that solid six. <laughs> Coming out of the gate real strong there, champ. And Orlingander actually comes up pretty good. Now, Noros, my good man, you notice that the the wrapping on the chamber door has a certain kind of rhythmic cadence to it that you find to be a bit strange, but you can't uh, put your finger on it. He, uh, Gurel. Yeah, he, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, he's going to grab Gurel. And kind of like okay. pull him back for a second and go, hey, wait a moment. Do you hear that? Yeah, it's for me. No, 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 no. Okay. Wait, what? It's the knocking. Yeah, in the very. For me. Oh, are you about to get on a weapons deal? Are you selling drugs? <gasps> no, those are those are two very bad things that you shouldn't be doing at all. Why are you doing those? I'm Don't. messing with him. He's not actually doing that. Answer the door. Uh, and he kind of takes a step back. Uh, Kahalan's looking at all this super confused. I may jam the door open. The door opens, and behind you is a very stately half-elf man. Dressed in what is the structural equivalent of a tuxedo for a half elf. Uh, Beautiful silk and mithril filigree. He looks across the entryway and stares dead in Gurel and says in Elvish to him. And I'm going to PM in Elvish what it says. And Gurel, ah, I can also I, speak in Elvish. I can also speak Elvish. 
Okay, does every stupid asshole here speak fucking Elvish? <laughs> Who does not speak Elvish? You know hey, what? DK, gonna... you still got four languages to learn. Just speak hey, hey, Elvish. I'm just gonna... Oh, I was muted. I'm saying that I refuse to speak Elvish. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Um, so, for those of you who speak Elvish, the half elf looks at Garel and says, Beware. The wolf howls at midnight. He steps forward, pulls close the brass door, and then leaves promptly. Are we going to see some wolves? Love wolves. Wolves? Cajon's just thoroughly confused. Would, would anyone mind explaining to me what just happened? Mm, I don't think so. I think I think it's better we don't know. I think it's, I think it's better we don't be accessories to whatever just happened. Kahalin will ex accept this explanation. You're a smart one. I like you. <laughs> Not smart. Wise. And also, do not want to get stabbed and then dumped in the back alley somewhere. I have way too many people to disappoint. Doing something else, at least. Fair enough. Right, um... I don't quite understand what he means by saying being left in the back alley. Is there um, something wrong with the alleyways on this plane? It's way to go to get the shit kicked out of you. You said a bad word. I hope for... Hey, don't say bad words in front of the actual <sighs> young person. 32 years on this planet. <sighs> yeah, I'm just saying, you know, there's more colorful language out there. You know, just, uh, just don't use the ones that start with F or S or B. Fuck, shit, bitch. Well, she covers her ears. I, come on, don't do that in front of the child. Uh, child. Cahullin's gonna lean into, um... Do, 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 do. What was his name? Naros's? Yes. yes. Uh, he, he's gonna lean in at, like... He's the one saying, don't say it in front of the child, right? Yes. Uh, he's gonna lean in and say, <clears throat> What do those things mean? Oh, they're, they're cursed words. They, uh, they are pretty much are like insults. Do they bestow actual Holy curses? Holy shit! You son of a bitch! You poor <laughs> bastard! No! <laughs> oh. So anyway, Orleander's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, uh, wait, uh, quick thing. Olivia, you gave yourself max, X, max HP per level, right, dear? Yeah. I just want to check. Okay, I need that from Kahalan and Noros, please, to see if you all are also dead. If everyone else gets a blood on this, I'm going to be just baffled that I have- Oh my god, no! Another eight! <laughs> That's not good. Uh, oh, we're doing wisdom checks? Okay. Wisdom, wisdom checks. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not high enough level to be bestowing uh, my plus five. Ugh. <sighs> 19, baby. Wait, DK, are you playing a satyr pa age ancients paladin? Yes. Also, wait, is this magical? Because if so, I have advantage. It is not magical. Damn it. Alright, uh, continue your conversation for the time being. Uh, I will be right back. Um, I'm a join through my phone, so I will be hearing but not talking. I need to walk Alright, go ahead. Orleander, is there a window in here? Is there a window? I'll just wait until well, we're in the middle of the conversation. Yeah, but, um, yeah Norris just kind of just goes and takes a seat. He's just going to start reading the paper. Um, or well, what was that wisdom saving throw? Did anything happen? You'll find out momentarily. Uh, he kind of sits there and coughing. Knock, knock, knock. 
You hear oh, a very pronounced someone else knocking on the door. Not my job this time. That's not my knock, and I walk away. Don't worry about it. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Learn from the master. Um, oh and and <laughs> so then Noros, so uh, Noros puts his hand on her on um. I don't even think you've introduced your name to us yet, but puts his hand on her shoulder and just goes, "Hey." Uh, Cahollin, <laughs> uh would like to casually bump him aside. Uh, how tall is she again? Um, let's say that she's like, uh, 6'5". Oh, she's even taller than Cahollin. Cahollin's going to bow slightly to her. And in Sylvan, which, uh, it does, he, he doesn't care if she knows Sylvan or not. He forgot how to speak common at the moment. Oh. Um, he's just going to say that she's, her beauty is so beyond his comprehension, it nearly matches his goddesses. Ooh, I have a thing for men that speak other languages. Uh, so she's uh, going to introduce herself. Hello, uh, the three of you. Uh, my name is Brandy. I brought some fine wine with me. I thought you might like to have some. We can have a, we can have a little game. Game? Oh, odd. Uh, what type of game? If we're talking about gambling, then I'm pretty sure I got most of these people here to beat. 
Um, it's a game where you hand me a few uh, coins and I fill your cup. <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> if you mentioned game, Noros told me that he has a really good spitting game. Uh, I had to. <laughs> hey, Orlando, we don't, buddy. Hey, we uh, no, that's not. We don't. You're you're ruining the the game spitting currently. Um, Cahullin is going to without hesitation. How much do I have? Da -da -da -da, checking my inventory. He's gonna burn it all. He's gonna reach into his pouch and it's still in Sylvan because he's he's his brain's having to catch up to speak common. He's just gonna uh, say that he will do whatever she wants uh, as long as it means he can spend some more time with her and hand her fifteen gold. I love a good tipper. She uh, takes a, she takes a cup and she fills it up all the way. I'm really sorry, Miss Brandy. I don't have any. My mom only gave me enough coins to get me on the train, <laughs> and no, so I don't have anything else. No, sweetheart, I'm my mom your doesn't mommy say now. that. It, oh, wait. <laughs> um, no. uh, um, uh, I mean, but you're not. But okay, I don't. I'm. I, no, I, I'm confused. Noros like steps to the side of Orlander and hands him like two gold. Uh, sorry, hands her two gold pieces. Oh, that's a nice try, lovely. She fills it up a quarter of the way. Um, Cahalan will give her a toast, still in Sylvan, uh, but at the very end of his sentence, he's able to uh, remember that common is what he's supposed to be speaking. He says, uh, the very last sentence he says is, your beauty, before taking a long sip. You see her just like uh, do like little butterfly like uh, blinks at you and like do a little <laughs> and then turn to look at the short little woman that still hasn't given her. <laughs> She's like desperately trying to like catch her breath and figure out what's happening because she is just like she grew up in a laboratory. So like this is the first quote-unquote sexual encounter she's ever experienced in her life and she is very befuddled and confused and she's just like desperately looking for coins uh yeah no Norris passed that you'd like two coins secretly uh let me make a sleight of hand check to see how well i pass those 20 <laughs> there you go i i i hit <laughs> nudge you like two gold it pieces okay you give me two gold and i'll go uh, the, and then I will druid craft, like, I'll just start druid crafting flowers, just random wild and, like, native flowers to the Eldine reaches, and just start, and give, and be like, this, eh, this is all I could find in the way of coin, but, uh, but how, uh, can we trade flowers, maybe, or... Can I, um, I just don't want you to leave. flowers. I just don't want you, you to. I haven't had that in a very long time. And she'll hand you a bouquet of wildflowers. And she'll just go, well, I mean, this bouquet is good and all, but gosh, you're like the whole garden. She'll uh, hand the short little lady uh, up a quarter of the way filled. And leave a little you. kiss on her floor. It's been a long time since someone's given me flowers. This is very sweet. Uh, Noros uh, kind of steps forward, hands her. Uh, so I, and she her. just starts. She just starts booking it to the other side of the train car, and she just kind of like sits on the floor. And, like, will, like, peek a glance every now and again, but she is completely overwhelmed by this situation. Noros kind of, like, uh, so he kind of steps forward, um, and he pretty much just hands her a single, uh, gold piece, and he's just like, uh, I don't believe, I, sorry, I couldn't hear you over your name over my little companion's general little freak out, which is adorable, but. Her name is Brandy. She said it very clearly and beautifully. He, like, gives you a look like, uh, Brandy. Yes, uh, sorry. 
I'm Noros. Nice to meet you. Hi, Noros. Um, wait, what? You gave me a coin. What was that? Yeah, a gold coin. Did was there any stipulations, or you just like walked up to me and handed me a coin? Uh, just uh, for the drink. Oh, okay. Um, well, hello. I uh. uh let me just fill this up for you. Sorry, I'm reading something. Uh, Colin's um, just like what? What brings you all? What brings you all to this train? Uh, that work business. I'm working for House Lenar, uh, doing some uh, personal matters for the employer there. That type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My mom sent me on a birthday trip. I just turned eighteen today. Yes, you just want to go and see the world. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. mission. The lady has sent me to go, well, the, uh, patronee, <laughs> my lady, has sent me to go meet him for, and then he just shrugs, because he doesn't know what he's going for. He just knows he's going as, like, backup. Well... For twenty one or for twenty coins, this does get you guys a little more wine. So if you'd all like to sit around, I can refill your glasses, and uh, you can listen to me sing you a nice little song. Uh, Kahalin will down the rest of his drink and then present it to be refilled. No uh, rest. Takes his glass of wine and offers it to Grunel in the back as he kind of takes a seat with him. Um, Orleander is still at the front of the car, very overwhelmed, just kind of trying to process herself. Orleander, hey. I would like it if you would come a little closer to me. <laughs> Okay. Wait, before Shoot. before Lander goes, Norris like, come here, come here. Why? 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 Alright, listen. Read this line. This line, okay. Say that her eyes are something that you can get lost in, like, the internal sea. Okay, I'll try. Now, hey, do not stutter. Don't stutter. Don't do that thing. Do not stutter. No stuttering. Got it. Got no stuttering. And he looks over at Grinnell and he goes, one silver piece does not say half of that. <laughs> Orleander will walk back up to the front of the car and go, um, uh, you're, um, and look back at Noros and then look Noros, back, Noros is gonna get just straight up, thumbs up. <laughs> and go, um, your, your eyes are lost <laughs> in a sea. Oh. Uh, how, how, does, how did you know? <laughs> I... It's not, it's not me, but my, my lover, he's out at sea. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> oh. Girl starts snickering. <laughs> uh, hey, look, Kahala I'm a the sailor. At this. He uh, hands Grinnell the wine. You want to sip some? With the business deals go down a little smoother, huh? He looks at you, looks at the wine, pulls out a flask, and goes, "I don't drink wine." Oh, thank God! I thought we, I, if we did, we couldn't be friends. And he sits on the wine down on the council. <laughs> He's not gonna drink it at all. See, I prefer this this uh, whiskey. My boss used to give me all the time. That <clears> stuff <throat> would really good. What do you got in that flask of yours? <laughs> um. She offered to sing to us. Would I be able to sing back to her in seven? Are you asking us, big man, or yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Can you? I mean... I, uh, performance is my thing. Uh, go ahead and perform for us. I would love to uh, hear how a creature from the woods raised by bears could sing. Very interested. I'll pull... I'll feel something in my pocket, and I'll pull out another two gold and I'll go oh I I have more for you oh thank you so much sweetheart you're not oh, god he's 
Uh, so he, yeah. he hands another glass with another, to with Orle- another flower. Or- Orleander. I hope you guys are keeping count. I have two glasses in me. Um, uh, she has. She hasn't drank the first bit you poured her, so now she just has a half glass, and she's just like incredibly nervous. Okay. Well, uh, um, tell me, oh. are you ready for my song? Uh, sh- sure. All right. Are you all sitting down? Oh, she should be able to see this. <laughs> she sits crisscross applesauce on the floor right in front of you. All right. I have to think of it too quick. Uh, DM, by the way, how much time has passed on the train? How, mu- how much longer do you have until ARC next? It's been about 30 minutes, so oh, you still have an hour and a half. Um, Randy looks each one of you in the eyes as she sings, and you just hear a, a melody going, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. We have to make wisdom saving throws? Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's a 13. Oh, uh, Kaholan, are you playing to <laughs> Nat what? 20, oh, baby. <laughs> that's what we talking about, that demon luck, baby boy. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat what, uh, what happened? For some reason, my sound cut out for a moment there. Uh, I just wanted uh, our first Nat 20. Roll a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage, Kaholan. Ooh, you are not going to beat that. Uh, you no. can try again, buddy. Um, roll with uh, disadvantage, you said? Uh, wow. Normally when you roll it, you just do it. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how to say this, but, um, well, Geralt passes. Noros obviously passes. Um, and but Kaholan... And Oleander, you find yourselves... Wait, if Garel passes, then Oleander would pass, because Oleander got a 13. No, um, Garel passes for a character reason that you will find out later. Oh, okay. Um, um, if I was re-rolling, yeah. then I got an 18, didn't I? No, but disadvantage. Got... Yeah, disadvantage. Oh, okay. It's a 5. Um, you find this woman's song breathtakingly captivating. You are charmed by her more so than you were earlier. Uh, would my performance check have been before or after her song, by the way? <laughs> uh, beforehand. And what was your performance for exactly, Cajon? Uh, I was singing to her and Sylvan. Uh, she found it. Uh, how did she find it, Brandy? Uh, do I not have a role that can tell me? Let me see how well he did on the performance check. It was a 19. It was an ex- Oh, that's pretty it? good. Yeah, it was a 19. He did a very Wait. good job. Now, Cahoan, what instrument did you use? Um, it was just a pure singing voice. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so, Brandy, feel free to describe how you are mildly enchanted by Hakalan singing, and how now Cahoan is deeply enthralled with you. Cahoan... If I knew that you had these abilities, I would have asked you to harmonize. Um, he says, I will happily perform with you. Alright, I ask him to sing my melody with me again. <laughs> Fail me now, performance. That's, that's <laughs> a terrible idea. Make a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> Uh, how do I make it with disadvantage? You just roll it, and when you Mine's... roll it, it'll ask you to pick it at disadvantage or not. Uh, when I click, it when I click, it just click rolls. the minus. 
Click the minus. Oh, yeah, click the minus. See, like that. Okay. That's weird. It should give you the, oppor the opportunity. It does it, it, does it for yeah. me. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, uh, it I have yeah that's weird as hell. We'll figure that out in post. Yeah. Uh, right. But I did roll a 24 in performance. Cajon, um, you are mesmerized by this woman, so far as you can tell, as a woman. And you find yourself Excuse beholden me, sir, to her lady. Limb. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Please don't beat me. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. So, you find yourself inculcated towards this particular human, as does Orleander. Um, but our friend Noros and Garel have found themselves to be less than hospitable towards her wiles. Go ahead. Right, and what's game you about here? Um, hey, are you two all right up there? <laughs> no, we're not all right. Uh, Cahalan's not even going to acknowledge him. <laughs> Yeah, same. Orleander is just dazed. He uh he sees that Orleander has an ass and goes, "Fuck!" Oh, they didn't cover. They, she didn't cover her ears. It's almost yeah, it seems be like up. she's not paying attention. Here, let's see if this. Uh, works. I'll and do. They both get a flick to the head with my mage hand. Uh, I'll do a perception check on Brandy and then the three of them just to see if I can figure out what's going. Would it be per uh, perception or insight check to try to figure out what's going on right now? Insight. All right, insight. Um, I have to uh, uh, for a short. <laughs> not can, good. And <laughs> can can, can, uh, can Garel help me since we're both doing this? Sure. Yes. Seventeen. There we go. You determined that this particular woman might not be overtly hostile, but she is definitely a very very good saleswoman. Um. She's just trying to get more money. Well, yeah. I already gave her everything I have, so... He uh, he kind of looks over at, at Grail and he goes, and he whispers and he goes, Just in case this does end up going a little bit haywire, you mind uh, helping me, buddy? If I will... Lad, there'll be an arrow in her face, don't worry about well, it. What? What?
perhaps we can end this all peacefully. You got your money. You, I don't know. You, I mean, they were already pretty much obsessed with you as it is. And you um, can just leave with the pride on your shoulder, you know, a little money in your pocket. So have most of your drink and, uh, you know. Cahalan I do want to say. Well, yeah, or Leander, or Leander will me... stand up and go, she's not hurting anyone. Why can't she just stay and hang out? Because you are literally underneath a magical spell. No, I'm not. I, no, I, I, I detected good and evil on her, and she's not evil, so... Yeah, well, good people can still do bad things, Orlander. Um, people like... Cahalan's gonna get right in his face. Uh, how tall was he again? He's like 5'11". He's like, oh, barely 6 foot. Then he's gonna, uh, he's gonna bend just a bit, because we're about the same height, and stay in the face. <clears throat> All right, hey, buddy. Yeah, you don't you don't want this. I I will knock your ass out, clean out. I have no qualms of doing that, and I don't want to. You were raised by bears. I like bears. You know, we can all just be fine. No, no, There's... no. It's this is not the first time I've had people fighting over me. I'm not fighting over you. I'm fighting against you. There's a difference. <laughs> oh, babe, I thought that we were better than that. God, I God, you are magically sinking people to give you money. Not sure if we're in the same ballpark anymore. Very I, pretty, very nice. But I will uh, take my leave as soon as someone gives me a tip. Okay, he uh, takes a gold coin and he flicks it to her. There you go. I, well, you could have done that a little bit nicer, sweetheart. But I'll take it. Yeah, and she mm -hmm. walks. Mm -hmm. Don't don't try to maintain the moral high ground here. You literally brainwash the two of them with your song. She, like, already left by the time- while he was, like, complaining. <laughs> uh, she doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Cahalan will give her a very, uh, sad look, but he's not sure if he's really allowed to follow her. But sh she, like, turns and looks at, uh, Cahalan and Orleander and gives them two a week. A wink. Uh, Cahalan's gonna smile back at her, and, uh... Oh. Do -do 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 -do. Oh. You know, he's going to compliment her and Sylvan. He's going to forget that common was a thing again and compliment her and Sylvan. Gosh, she's pretty. But I have to agree with... I have to agree with Noros. I read her mind. She's just after our wallets. Yeah, it's okay. A lot of people are. Uh, but you Colin's know... going to actually like, cross his arms and huff at all of you. Fair Why trade. Why are you huffing? Fair yes. trade. Also, next time you get in my face like that, I will drop you, say it to your man. Uh, he's gonna get Im immediately in your face. Oileander will look at her half a cup of wine, smell it, and then just drink the whole thing. Oh. Uh, hey, but don't do that before we have to go. <coughs> All right. oh, that's That tastes really funny. Yeah, no, that's alcohol. Um... That's what alcohol to- my mom <clears throat> uses alcohol to clean her lab. Should she be doing that? No, that's- that's cleaning alcohol. Uh, yeah. This is drinking alcohol. Oh. Two very different things. Wait, you could drink cleaning? Okay. F no, don't- Do, Have adults just been drinking cleaning products this entire time? Yep, totally, 100%. I, uh, 100%, <laughs> totally. He looks back over at Grell and he goes, um, now you see why- uh, you know, we can solve things without having to resort to shooting them in the face. Mm. It always works for me. Well, this is why you now have me around. Th think of it like this, right? We're friends now, all right? I got you covered. If it comes to talking situations, I can be your broker. Oh, quick Wait, thing. Did you just As say we're all friends now? No, Randy, I did not say that. Quick thing, quick thing. As you are all engaging in your random chicanery, Brandy about faces and scampers down the hallway. No, go ahead. Bye, Brandy. I may hand the door shut. <laughs> right. So, um, seems like none of you have, um, hmm. The wherewithal to uh, withstand feminine wiles, it seems. Oh, uh, first of all, I completely did. I dissolved that situation. I know when to shut it and when to not use it, all right? 
but you told me about your spitting game, but we didn't get to, I didn't get to see you spit. It, it works better when the person's in just trying to take money from you, kid. I mean, like, it, it just works better then. We'll, I'll, we'll work on your spitting game, because that is... I can spit pretty well. And she'll spit on the floor. Oh, no! Oh, mm. That's... Alright, he pressed the digitates it away. That's not what I mean when I say spit game. That is the exact opposite. You need Please to be a little um, more... Well, use words that can't be interpreted quite that literally. It's like, it's like, it's not my fault that I'm stuck here with two backwoods. I don't know where they're from. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm back. I missed whatever went on. Um, and he kind of, he pretty much is just gonna, um, go back to the chair and stuff like that, and pretty much is going to, he's gonna chat with Grell for the time being, kind of get to know him, because he's definitely the most interested in him out of all, uh, everybody here, and just kind of talk to him about, like, what he does for work and whatnot. So, uh, mind if I ask you a couple questions? Hmm. Mind? No. Will I answer them? We'll see what you ask. Yeah, all right. Well, what do you do for work? Some complaining like that. I work with horses. I'm oh. from Valinor. We, um, my family sells some of the finest war horses that you can find in this country. Oh, I, uh, the bad to say that I was expecting something a little different. <laughs> Well, uh, let's just say... Oh, well, that's cool. So you got a half hour to wait. <laughs> um, Kahalan wants to bond with Aliander. Because Aliander can appreciate beauty. <laughs> <laughs> He's stupid. Uh, so we just talk in Sylvan about plants and nature and shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck those guys in common. Well... <laughs> Obviously not phrasing it like that, but certainly, um, certainly not uh, mentioning them in nice words. Just simp and Sylvan talk about druid things. I'm not a druid, but you know I'm Fey, so I know of druid things. Nature's part of my stick. Um, no, it's gonna be like yeah, horses, interesting. Yeah. No, I'm gonna... You see, my family sells them, and I'm, um, <clears throat> how you say, uh, I'm the one who rides with the entire group and uh, keeps them safe. I'm quite good at, um, well, and he kind of just motions towards the bow on his back. It's like, I'm rather good at it, and uh, I just make sure no one tries to uh, filch our things and well, like I said before, I have sticky fingers, but that's just out of a curiosity. Interesting. Uh, oh, well, uh, that actually does not really open any way to any of my other questions I had for you, because I was under the assumption that you were just, like, criminal. No offense. Oh. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I don't... I'm not going to say I don't do the occasional thing that might be uh, illegal illegal from time to time, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, the family's totally on the up and up. Uh, it makes it easier to get away with things that way. Well, um, good, good to hear. Good to know, I guess, at least. Uh, I am a pilot and uh, part-time sorcerer and whatnot, I guess. <laughs> Part, wait, part-time sorcerer. How can, no. you, can you turn it off? No, in other words, I don't really focus that much on my magic, as much as I would like to, at least. I've gotten, I'd probably say my control over it the past couple of months have probably gotten a little bit better and whatnot. But besides that, I, uh, I feel like I don't know as many spells as someone who's been training the arcane arts would know, if that makes sense. Ah, uh, yeah, I dabble. I'm not, um, how you would say gifted, studied a bit um, yeah. under a, well, under the friend who I'm uh, coming here for, 
and uh, let's just say he's uh, he was the rather gifted one. Hmm. Well, I um, yeah. Your, your old man is the one who taught you that, or just your more or less your mentor? Ah, uh, uh, more of a mentor than an old man. You could also say um, he was uh, an, kind of an employer, but not really. We were just friends, and I helped him out with some things. And uh, oh. occasionally he'd get a breakthrough and make some money and throw it into my way. Sure. Uh, no, you know, never knew my old man, but, you know, I've had plenty of mentors like that also in my lifetime. But, uh, no, you seem, seem like you know how to handle your way around something good. It's always good to have someone like that, at least, my opinion. I like to try and avoid, um, problems whenever possible. Yeah, and, um, and when their problems do arise, you like to shoot them in the face. Exactly, yes, it works out um, in my favor generally. Good to know, good to know. Uh, then, yeah, I, you two can I guess, have your conversation also. <clears throat> um, Kahalan would like to open up with saying, Truly, she was beautiful. Yeah, she was pretty pretty. It reminded me of the beauty that comes with seeing winter turn to spring oh and the flowers start to open up and you have to pull up all your cabbage and brussels sprouts and you get to plant all your awesome things that'll bloom in the summer uh Cahillan nods with understanding i was not myself a farmer but i certainly did see the others do such things i spent much of my time studying when i was still among the land of Plants. He looks a bit awkward as he uh, shifts tone when he talks about how he used to be where there was a lot of wild stuff. Um, but then he's going to wave it away. <clears throat> I still remember the beauty that comes with the particular wildlife in the Fey Wilds. Do you know of the Fey? Um, yeah, actually. Um, he's gay nod. Have you ever seen the pictures of the Summer Queen? No. Mm, truly a beauty, as all the queens are. She, uh, she almost matched one of them, I would say. Truly beautiful. But there is only so beautiful that a mortal can get, of course. Oh, yeah, she was. General simp talk. <laughs> um, Cajon's gay expressed interest in her druid abilities. I have seen you grow plants. How long have you been uh, with that particular ability? Oh, my entire life. Mm, you were born with a gift. Uh huh. Indeed. What a wonderful thing. I myself was, uh, unfortunately barred from any sort of that nature. Hence, why I am what I am. And he's gonna reference the fact that he's, uh, has a shield, armor, a whip. Uh, but he's gonna say that, you know. My oath does pertain to nature, or at least keeping nature as is. He's got to nod to himself in satisfaction. Can I, um, not fully expend a use of channel divinity in order to have spectral plants wrap around me? in display of what I can do. Yeah, go ahead and do that. All right, then yeah, I'm going to channel uh, Nature's Wrath without getting very angry. Uh, it's just like his face is getting dark and a little in focus. And the armor that wasn't really visible beforehand becomes a lot more defined 
as it comes into reality. And it's going to get wrapped in uh, shadowy plants, vines, um, some flowers, a little bit of thornage. It looks like his, his armor itself is growing into nature. And that wraps up to his arms as well and onto his shield. Just in general, his entire body is covered in plants, but as though they're from shadows. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> He's getting a uh, smile at her. Yes, I find myself be uh, find myself. I myself find it to be beautiful as well. Though, not quite as beautiful as though if they had color. And then he's going to let it dissipate. Wow. I just have this. And she taps the scale mail made of like... Because it's made of like actual scales. He's getting out of here. Respectable defense. My brain is blanking on what else to say. But what? in general, Cahullin respects Ollivander. Especially and because we're both going to be lost in reality. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's see. 14 plus index. So she should actually have a 15, not a 16. Yeah, you feel a she... sudden lurch, and the train begins to slow as it comes into the station and Arcanex. Right, finally. Uh, Cajon's gay sigh. I guess we must return to the others. His voice gets well, a lot raspier when he switches from Sylvan to Common. Well, they don't seem like the worst of people. Can't appreciate beauty. Well, you know, sometimes a garden has weeds. Wise words. Fine, I'll give them a How chance. How far away are they? Um, we're speaking in Sylvan. Do you speak Sylvan? I speak Elvish, which means I pick up certain things. Well, we're thirty-five feet away. How good's your hearing? Not that good. Are you talking at a normal volume? Uh, I think we were like just talking at like, not like loud talking, but like we were like talking loud enough to overcome the engine. <clears throat> also, DK, did you, say you switched back to? Yeah, I did common? switch back to common. <clears throat> That's why yeah. my voice got raspier. So Olivia might still have been in Sylvan, but I was in common. I would have said the thing about yeah. weeds. In we, uh, in Sylvan, we both via uh, Noros. Noros looks over at uh, Girl. We like, do they? Uh, never mind. I don't. I'm not even. Uh, I just. Hey, uh, look. I'm. I. It's fine. I understand. Um, he begins to make his way off the train. Oh, uh, actually, let me do this little segment really quick. You hear uh, the kershunk. You. Noros feel the electricity of the lightning rail die down to a faint murmur and then dissipate into a low hum. And you hear the conductor go over the speaker. All right. Welcome to our connects. Take the tenses floating discs up to the rail station. If you need to go to the phone rooms, you could just get off right here. But if you're going up to the university, you're going to have to take the trams. Where are we here. supposed to be going? The university. Oh, okay. Um, Cajon's going to have like a deer in headlights look, as he did not understand most of the words. But he's going to relax when he hears trams to university. Because he's like, ah, oh, I can do that. As you exit the train station, you see that the train station actually flanks Lake Galifar. There are a series of tensors floating discs that take you from the train to the shore 
and then the discs alight up into the air, taking you high, 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 several hundred feet up into the floating towers of Arcanex. And they actually have really cool art for this. So let me switch this over to Arcanex. Tell me if everyone can see this. Dope. You cannot? That is no, amazing. I said, dope. Looks cool. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, um, fuck yeah. yeah. I know, it's super fucking tight. Um, Arcanex is weird as shit. So basically the way it works is that it's a farming community on the ground. It's where uh, Ondere actually produces a bulk of their food, but floating above it are these floating rock towers which house Arcanex, one of the premier magical institutions in Corvair. Probably the best. Um, maybe even tied with the University of Kornberg. Uh, Manned by the most powerful gnome in existence. Oh, Elaine Manistan. <laughs> Who, I sort of got, if you just make a beeline to Kornberg, so I have to pull out Oiland Manistan, I'll be very fucking mad. But anyway. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, is, this, is this campaign in canon with Cataclysm? Um, it is, technically. Um, if you saw the, the newspaper that you were. Yeah, um, if you was saw the newspaper... Of... Oh, God. Huh? I was saying, was that speaking of the Jaredus attack? It was. Um, yeah. When you got in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the train and you saw that you received a newspaper, it said, reports in Dargoon of a raiding party besieging outlying towns has finally come to pass. The would-be rabble-rousers were executed by the crown this morning. Um, in this canon, the second six were executed by the Dargoonian authorities. Oh, we're baby back babies. So wait, yep. the, the yep. so the Cataclysm group is dead. Yeah, this is this. Yeah, in this canon, well, it's, uh, it's an alt, it's an alt reality in this one. Damn, that sucks. I would have fucking loved to meet Jaredus. Well, <laughs> Ponike still exists. Yes, Ponike still exists because that fucking bitch can't die, which we will get into later. Um, so anyway, let's get back into the thick of it. Don't worry, um, Ian. This character can die. Oh, thank God. <laughs> By the way, I hate you for making a character that can't die, and then I foolishly allowed you to do it. So, you find yourselves within the confines of Arcanix as you are ascending up to the upper levels. You can see the beautiful flourish of the architecture, the faint tinkle of bells, the murmur of sages and mages and mage rites as they begin to discuss the fineries of the magical arcs. Of the magical arts. Um, you ascend and you ascend and you ascend and you alight upon the central corridor. You see a very tall elf is staring at you. He has a clipboard and there is a quill in his hand and he stares intently and says, Nary a word. Um. Cahullin would like to walk up to this elf and ask for directions to uh, then who's going to fumble with this letter to see if there's any specifications on where to go. It told you to go to the head librarian and request a book. And the way the letter works is it basically tells you um, it suggests a book, and the book is representative of something that your character would find very interesting. So let's go from the top and tell me what the book is. You could make up a title, you can think about it for a brief second. Tell me what the book is, and how it relates to your character, and why that book would be important to your character. Um, uh, let's start from the middle this time, because last time I started from the top at the bottom. So, Noros, what would that book say? Oh, um, so he kind of, like, comes up to the librarian and he goes, I'm looking for the book, it's called, um, A Father's Fair Wear Travels. I, uh, I don't know, I mean, I guess the story, uh, he kind of, like, knows, like, I, I think I've read this book before, my employer made me read it, but it's about how a father is unable to communicate with his son for outlying reasons, and he can only helplessly watch as the boy grows up before his eyes and whatnot, and see him only off on his journey with one good 
final word given to him. A pretty sweet, wholesome tale, if I think so myself. The librarian looks at you and cocks her head. Um, she is a human woman with pitch black hair, blue eyes, the eyeglasses on her head, cocks her head and looks at you and goes, Do, is your name Noros, by any uh, chance? Yes, it is. Most curious, but I have that book right here for you. It was already selected. Very curious. Here you go. Um, there seems to be a note on it. It says to, she leans in a little bit and kind of peeps at it, to go to conference room X6. Uh, he takes the book and he waves over at the group and he goes, well, uh, in case we ever meet again, it was nice being you all. I mean, for the most part. And despite the whole uh, points uh, to Orlander and um, Cothalan goes, you know, besides the whole you two getting brainwashed on a train station to give somebody all of your money. And then he waves a girl. It was also nice meeting you, shady man. I'm sorry, horse seller. And he proceeds to head over to the conference room, smiling. He just smirks and waves. <gasps> you sell horses? Horses are real pretty. Well, yes, my family has sold horses for generations. That's so cool. All right, um, let me see here. Whoever rolls next, roll anything you want, gets to go next. And it's going to be Olivia. <laughs> it's always Olivia. Oh, <laughs> it's macro. I just got macro. Fucking going. fastest hands in the West. Okay, or I actually do have that macro. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course uh -huh. you fucking do. So, Orleander, what does the book say, and what does it reveal about Orleander? Um... So, the book she has been offered to find is, it is called Making Plants, and it is a book uh, by, it was written by Evangeline Selick, and it is pretty, it, it is pretty much how to make plants more sentient. Um, hi, my my letter says that I need uh, come to the library, look for a book by E. Selick called Making Plants. The librarian, the same librarian from prior, leans back and gives you a brief scaphalic. I'm going to be a bit presumptuous here. Is your name Orleander? It is? How'd you guess? <sighs> because that exact book is listed here with that name on it. Um, it says to go to conference room X6. I believe you should go there post haste. Okie dokie. And she will take the book and trot off with pep in her step and a song in her heart. Love it. All right, whoever gets to whoever rolls next. And Kaholin, what is your book, and what does it reveal about your character? Uh, the book he is tasked to find is What Makes a Good Protagonist and Other Literary Devices. And it reveals I that, love that... It reveals that Kaholin has this particular interest in uh, protagonists, heroic deeds... Um, grand actions, things like that. Like he's he's very interested in trying to make a name for himself, or at least making himself interesting enough to tell a story about. Um, you walk up to the librarian. The librarian immediately gives you an ocular pat down, takes a deep breath, and goes, "Is your name Kahalan?" Um. Cahalan's not going to look surprised at all that she knows who he is, and he's going to nod and say, uh, yes, I'm sure a lot of things gave that away. Uh, <clears throat> yes, um, your book, for some strange reason, smells like lilacs and gooseberries. I figured you would be the person it's for. Please go to conference room X6. Uh, he's going to nod. Uh, does she hand him the book? Yes. 
He's going to read while he walks. An old <laughs> Give me give me perception with the uh, with disadvantage. Okay. Oh wait, that's performance one second. Perception. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. One second, can I argue that he'd be able to do this normally since he was a university student? You know what? I will allow that. Go ahead. Yes. As in the dex save normal or the perception is an 18? Dex. Damn it. <laughs> hey! You are uh, a large coterie of gnomes around the corner discussing the metallurgical purposes and applications of silver in defending against lycanthropic entities, and you definitely dodge past them while continuing to read the book. Now, Noros, what is your book? That's already gone. Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm being an idiot. Gurel, your book, if you don't mind, my good man. He actually, after watching everything, he just looks at her and goes, Girl, I'm sure you have a book for me. Ah, oh, yes. Um, it's, hmm. I can't read this title, can you? And she hands the book over to you. Um, it is wrapped in wax parchment paper with a thick red ribbon about it and a small note that says, Conference Room X6, Post Haste. Right. What does the book say? So, let's see. In... Um, we'll say... In Elvish, um, it says, Urin Kai Archery and Equestrian Archery. The Basics, the Advanced, and the Expert. And it's just a it. book on his archery skills, on like on what he's been studying. And he's like, hmm. He flips it open and looks to the back. Oh, I haven't tried that hand position yet. Thank you. And he starts walking off. What? You all arrive, strangely, at conference room X6 at about the same time. Um, so, in fact, at the same time that you all attempt to go through the door at the same time without seeming to notice that anyone else is also attempting to enter at the same time, creating um, some semblance of confusion as you all jam into the door, Three Stooges style, at once. Um, can I roll dexterity again? Because I will instinctively try and move away from people. Anyone can do anything they would like during this scene. Uh, I'll I mean, just... We all got the books at the different times, oh. and I'll assume that we entered in at different times. One second. That deck save was made with the wrong character sheet. There is a reason for that. Oh, I have failed my deck. Oh god! Oh no! <laughs> once the beast or once the bestiary loads, I will fucking try. Yeah, it's not loading for me either, which is a bit obnoxious. Yeah, I do like a very like nimble dodge out of the way as everybody slams through the door. And then Garel hears a very familiar screech. He starts looking around. And a snowy white barn owl f swoops down and lands on his shoulder. Harry Potter, motherfucker. <laughs> <gasps> oh, that's such a pretty owl. What's its name? This? Hmm. <laughs> Ah, how do I say this in common? Hold on, I'm trying to actually remember how to say this. Ooh, I lost connection to the server. Uh oh. Are, are you still recording? Is everything above board? Uh, I am still recording, I believe. Uh, yes, it just. All right, good. Okay, I just lost connection to a server for a moment there. Looks like I'm back, though. All right, good, 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 good. Uh, good. Any negatives? Now, uh, Noros, how do you react to the... How do I react to the what? Wait, wait what'd you say? The chicanery. Um... 
Wait, describe it again. I'm sorry. We were they were everything was cutting out. I didn't I didn't hear what was going on. Everyone going to the door basically at the same time, three students oh. style. Well, I mean, I still don't understand how this came up to be if we all got the books at different times. Norris is just gonna like back up and then wait. It's for magic. Else. Oh, Norris is just gonna back up and wait for everybody else to go through before he goes in. Yeah, uh, that's perfectly acceptable. Yep. No. Uh, Kahalan definitely is gay smack into whoever doesn't dodge away. Because <laughs> uh, I rolled a six. That uh, twenty-one. I think was everyone did a good job. Um, Noros, go ahead and give me dexterity or perception or whatever you think would be appropriate to just get out of the way. And you can do so with advantage. Oh, uh, okay. Watch, double nat once. 23. Uh, Noros makes the astute observation to step backwards as the Holland face plants while reading a book. Directly on the floor in front of him. Uh, he's going to look around, embarrassed, to see if anyone noticed him. And quite plainly, people probably noticed him. <laughs> We're all staring at you. Uh, he's just going to, like, grab up his book, stand up as quickly as he can, and uh, play it off. Because he's embarrassed and doesn't know how to react to having just done that. Uh, hey, I know that we make jokes about you being raised by bears. Were you raised by boars? <clears throat> I was raised by no one. Oh, is that why you don't have any manners and you just can't walk through a door? He's gonna throw his brow at him. I know all the ways of treating people. I was mm -hmm. literally made to know. It's not uh, my uh, fault you here in the mortal plane are so different. Yes, totally. It is our fault for being different. We should all just be the same, right? No <laughs> difference allowed. Anyway, uh, he proceeds to step to the door and then takes a seat down, and he kind of cracks open the book and starts to kind of scour to see if there's any other messages in it. Carol looks down as all of this was happening. Right, I heard your question. Sorry, I just saw the big one fall on his face and all of that happened. It's Hap is the owl's name. Oh, thanks. Also, hi, Noros. We we see you again. I did not think that we were going to end up in the same spot. Uh, How serendipitous. You know a big word? I'm really smart. No, okay. Well, I, um, that could be true, actually. Kahalan uh, scratches his chin. Yes. How odd that we are all here. Hmm. <laughs> That's all he has to say. Now, uh, before you in front of the table, you can see that there are... There's a large marble table with eight indentations. Four of them are book-shaped, which is immediately apparent, and four are key-shaped. I think you all reach the reasonable conclusion as to what this room is demanding of you. Um, the books that you have, when you begin to parse them as you read them, they begin to thin, such as in the case of Noros, and simply tell you that a ritual must be performed using the keys and the books. Uh, Noros, since you are the one that actually read your book, you are the first one to determine this readily and swiftly. Noros kind of walks over to a key. Uh, he kind of just walks over to the keyhole, pulls out his key, puts it in, and then proceeds to kind of start to read off what he thinks in the book could be related to activating said key. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, so was my book literally just the book that I said? Yeah. So, okay, cool. So I have no idea what how the book relates to the ritual. Right. You did uh, read the book. I, I, I I'm did just going to... Seeing Noros you... do what he's doing, um, <laughs> Geralt's just going to take the book, put it in the slot, take the key, put it in the slot, and then turn the key. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, what does everyone else do? Noros? Kaholin? Uh, Leander? Did either of what they did work? Yeah, uh, I mean, I was just... Well, you I'll... hear... Oh, God. You hear a resounding and distinct chunk as if something is being unlocked. 
Um, um, Oleander will follow um, Geralt's Garel. oh, sorry, Garel's lead and put her book in the slot and put her key in the slot and turn her key. Cahullin oh, uh, is going to put his book in the slot, pull out his uh, key, and break away the wax um, furring mm-hmm. his brow because he's now thinking to himself the, this damn bastard making it a little bit more difficult for me um, and once he has all the wax away, flaked away he's going to shove the key into its slot okay um, I think by now everyone has placed their key in the slot and also placed their book on its proper receptacle correct mm-hmm. alright perfect your vision begins to swirl and mire, and your vision goes dark. You are cold. You are alone. There is nothing. And the, then in your vision appears a spark, and ahead of you, a tree. A beautiful tree, ringed in light, and adorned with fruits. The four of you appear in a glade. The grass is soft. The air is sweet and honeyed. It is the early morning. The sun crests over the horizon and bathes over you. In front of you, which is immediately apparent, is simply this tree. Several baskets lie strewn around, clearly to collect fruit, but the baskets are empty. Under the tree is a scale. At present, the scale is evenly balanced, as nothing is on either side. Aside from this, the scale and the tree, there are fruits in the tree and the baskets. What would you all like to do? What kind of tree is it? Uh, give me a perception check. Or actually, in this case, nature, I suppose. Oh, and you already did that. Um, it is a pomegranate tree. She will think back on how the pomegranate she made was stinky. And she'll pick up one of the pomegranates and smell it. Uh, give me a perception check. Ooh. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first off, I hate you. Um, as you pick up the pomegranate, and you are about to give it a very fervent sniff to see if it is okay, you notice that on the exterior of the pomegranate, written in very clear common is the word work. You son of a bitch. What are... Do the other pomegranates have words on them? With that nat 20, you immediately deduce that the pomegranates have a variety of words on them. Um, You can tell via a quick pat down that they don't seem to repeat so whatever is on the tree is what it is Um, Hmm. there are 15 in total what are the words Uh, with that nat 20 I am just going to post it in chat Um, you quickly look through the pomegranates and discover that these are the words Uh, he so Noros kind of reads through them. Pretty much, he picks up attentive work and. Well, I'm holding work. Oh, well, he proceeds. Well, it takes it out of your hand. He takes work, attentive, and. Just takes it. Doesn't even ask. Just fucking takes it. <laughs> and yeah, work and attentiveness, and he puts them on the scale himself. And then he looks over at the rest of them and he goes, "I think this is meant to be." some sort of test against what we think of ourselves as. So, I think... Oh, and he also picked up the word conduct, too. You place them on what part of the scale? Do you divvy them up? Do you separate them? How do you do this? No, he puts them on one side, then he walks over to the other side, and he puts his hand on it, and he puts enough pressure to match it. The scale does not move. When I put my hand on it, or when I put the food on there? When you put the food on there, the scale dips down to the left. But when you attempt to put pressure, 
on the scale, nothing happens. Um, you're welcome to make an overt measure. Sit on the scale. <laughs> the scale does not budge. So he looks over at the group and he goes, see what I mean? It's obvious that these... So then... Oh, I get it now. He then proceeds to take arrogance, mm, greed, and wrath. And he puts it on the other side. I think it's meant to be our flaws and what we view ourselves as good at. I'll pick up the pomegranate that says death, and I'll pick up the pomegranate that says life. I'll walk over, I'll use my staff to clear off both sides of the scale, and I'll put life and death on, on Wait, opposite sides. Wait, mine's worked yet. Did mine's work? Okay, uh, quick thing. Noros, can you tell me which ones you used again? It broke up a little bit. Oh, I, were, I used uh, arrogance. Uh, I think it was arrogance, greed, and longing? Yeah, longing. Wrath. Wrath, it was wrath. That's what it was, okay. Um, and you put them on the left and right side. Did you put them all on the left side, all on the right? I put the ones that are good on the right and then the ones that are bad on the left. So you split up all of them using good, your version of good and evil. My version of what I think is good about me and what I think is bad about me. Huh, interesting. And the scale begins to tip and right itself uh, with the good side raising higher than the evil side. And then it stops. So then I try the death in life. What happens? The scale evenly balances, but there's no outward manifestation. But you do hear a faint ding. Oh, they're supposed to be the opposite of each other. So then I'll do work and sloth. Ding. Um, um, speech and no, no, sorry, arrogance and attentiveness. Ding. Chastity and longing. Ding. Uh, view and wrath. Nothing. Mm. Hmm. Oh no, conduct and wrath. Ding. What else? Arrogance. Oh, you already did arrogance. You're right. Um, um, what was gluttony. arrogance? Arrogance and what? View. View. Because when you're arrogant, you can't see the right view. Uh, have we done conduct? We've done chastity, speech. Um, Reflection and Greed, maybe? I think. Reflection and gluttony? Those are the only two left, actually. That? Yeah, reflection, reflection and gluttony. Reflection and gluttony are the only two left. We have life and death, chastity, longing, contact, wrath, arrogance, view. Did we use speech? Yeah. Oh, speech? Oh, there's 15 words. Um, oh, so yeah, the only one that would be left would be... Uh, I'll do a investigate. No, I'll do a per insight check on this to see what this would represent. 22. Insight wouldn't work because it is an object. Um, you can do just a proficient intelligence check as some kind of deduction check if you'd like. Uh, um, I'll treat the ins I'll treat the insight as that then, since that's an intelligence check. With the twenty-two, you parse through the words and what you've discovered, and you figure out that it's creating contrast and value. Um, and you figure out that it seems to want you to weigh the value that you assign to the term. Uh, okay. So I was on the right path. Yeah, you were. You're actually doing. You all were doing a very good job, actually. Okay. So then, in this case, uh, he'll go. This, so he'll, this is what I have so far. So what else? This, so this is what Norse is going to say. Norse is going to go. I think this wants us to scale what we find to be worth 
what outweighs what good outweighs the evil. So we'll do this all one by one, and he'll go first. So he'll pick. So in this case, he will pick death, arrogance, greed, gluttony, sloth, and wrath onto the uh, evil side, and then he'll put good. He'll put life, uh, work, view, reflection, attentive. And conduct, and does the good does his good outweigh that bad in that case? Yes. And then, so then he'll step away. He'll say that yeah, those are mine, and he'll take those off and reset them and go. Now everybody, pick your pick your assigned parts, and that's what you put your most of your value on. Oh, um, okay. I thought it was just a game of opposites. In a sense, it is, but what? But, hmm. You know, because there is very clear cut what is bad and what is good in this case. But we need to figure out what do you value yourself most as? Hmm. Well, I, I guess I value life and work and I value reflection. And I'll put those three on one side, and then. And the opposite of those are death, sloth, and what's the opposite of reflection again? Wrath? Yeah. And wrath. Curious as to why. This is obvious. Why is that, Oleander? Yeah. Oh, so it's what I think the opposite yeah. is. What oh. You, so, so, Doris is going, so pretty much Doris going, like, what you think is worth the virtuous what are you willing to do so like for me oh. like me i'm willing to tap into death arrogance gluttony sloth and wrath right if it meant upkeeping life conduct work view attentiveness that oh way. i get what you're saying well since i value life work and reflection i guess i'll tap into death to till my field before a new harvest. Um, conduct to keep a good work ethic. And um, being attentive to self-reflection. All right, you too. The um, scales. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, Colin will go next. He has been watching this. Uh, he's gonna clear the fruit. <clears throat> he's gonna put death, life, speech, chastity, conduct, work, view, reflection, attentive, uh, longing, and wrath all on one side, and then arrogance, uh, greed, gluttony, and sloth on the other. Uh, with the four of them, the oh, the with side with four of them being things he uh, loathes, and everything else being something he went uh, he will use for his purpose. I love it. Now, girl. <sighs> I love puzzles, and he mage hands death. Arrogance, greed, sloth, onto one side, and then life, work, view. What was the other counterpart? Greed. What a really one for greed. Hmm. Conduct. Let's see. Have I gotten all of them? I think so. Yeah. All to the good side. Ding. Your vision begins to fade. The tree melts away, and you are all steeped in a sea of black. 
the sea of black becomes a sea of red and you find yourselves in plush seats uh, tell me if you can't fucking see what I cannot on. see alright here let me plop your tokens down that's probably what the problem is Ooh, this is a big area oh. ah god Sweet. can you all see it now we're in a giant yes. theater uh, okay, it's you're an opera, opera house, house mind you Yes. Theater. God, what fucking plebeians. <laughs> so anyway, you now have to perform King Lear, or you will all instantly be killed. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Now, I forgot um, to put the fucking things down for the scene, but what you generally see in the scene is a... Actually, everyone give me a... Before you, on the stage, just use your imaginations here, are a variety of horrifying creatures. Liches, Rakshasas, Demon Lords, Tarasks, a variety of horrifying creatures. Why are you measuring everything? What is going on here? That's <laughs> like, a massive fucking stage. Um, actually, okay. no. That's a pretty average stage. Yeah, no, that's... Ooh, their feet? Damn. That's so anyway... Well, the per that's the uh, apron. The proscenium is only like eighty feet, which is a big but average. Hey Olivia, does your character know anything about theater? No. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> as you are looking out into the stage, you will see a variety of very lifelike statues of the following creatures: a lich, a vampire, a rakshasa, a demon lord, a locust, a tiger, an archfey, a hag. An Elder Oblex, a Gelatinous Cube, Tiamat, Bahamut, a Dwarf, an Elf, an Empyrean, a Solar, an Elder Brain, a Neothode, an Air Elemental, a Water Elemental, a Warforged Colossus, a Warforged, a Storm Giant, an Ogre, a Tarask, a Harpy, a Treant, and an Awakened Tree. Which Archfey? It's just your general run-of-the-mill Archfey. Oh, okay. Um, you can see that these statues in front of them are a series of small pedestals numbered 1 to 28, which is also the number of statues is 28. That is immediately apparent to you. What would you all like to do? Are they on the pedestals? They are in front of them in a random order. So are the pedestals themselves the ones that are uh, numbered? Yes. The pedestals are numbered. And the pedestals are in front of the statues, and the statues are kind of haphazardly scattered across the stage. Um, Kahalan, I'm going to roll int to see if Kahalan can comprehend of what the hell is going on. Because even though he's okay with everything <laughs> being super fucky, he, uh, he doesn't know what's going on. Go ahead and roll me intelligence. Yeah, um, it. you have no idea. Mm -hmm. That's, that's I'm gonna... the umpire. I'm going to roll nature to kind of figure out what I know about these creatures. Not a lot. No, no, the ten is actually perfectly fine. Um, you determine rather quickly that there are two of each major creature type here, of which there are 14. There's two beasts, two undead, two plants, two oozes, two dragons, two elementals, two humanoids, etc., etc., etc. Hmm. I don't... I only see one beast. Oh, the locust and the tiger. Oh, a locust as in an animal. Yeah, beast units, yeah. And the monstrosities are, um, god damn it, where the hell did I put the monstrosities? The Tarask and the, the harpy. ogre. Oh, the Tarask yeah. and the no, ogre. The... I mean, the Tarask and the harpy. Yeah, the ogre is a giant. Oh, okay. Two constructs, two elementals. Oh, they're in Two order, Adderley. actually. The what? Yeah, yeah they're, they're in order. order. Now, the statues are, st are standing there in pristine condition. They seem perfectly lifelike, almost unerring so. Now, it seems that there's small handles on the base of the statues so that they can be moved. Um... Hmm. I think I have something that would be perfect for this situation. And because I have unlimited zero CR, I will turn into a goat. But it is a goat that is 
uh, it looks like a hedge. It looks like a hedge clipping of a goat. Uh. And start pushing statues around with my head. Uh, actually, so we'll stop. Actually, uh, Doris is gonna go from the storm giant one to the statue, and he's gonna like use shocking grasp and press his hand against it and try to infuse it with like electricity to see if it does anything. I don't know which statue is this. The storm giant one. Um, the electricity and lightning courses through the statue's body, but um, there is no noteworthy interaction from that. Although the statue does move ever so slightly backwards. Like it's like animated on its own or just like it got pushed back? You pushed the back. You pushed it back. Okay. Via the force of your attack. Um, I would like to call out to the rest. Uh, is anyone able to <clears throat> figure out what's going on? I will grant whoever does another int check guidance. I have investigation. I guess I can do that. Mm -hmm. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> I don't need it. But I'll roll it. <laughs> so, uh, Garel. Garel, you fucking son of a bitch. This is the <laughs> second net 20 that's ruined the entire thing. <laughs> You see, based on the number of statues and the ranking, that it seems that you have to rank the statues somehow. Um, you're not certain what the metric is, but you do determine that ranking is very important here. Um, you make the reasonable inference that maybe it's from good to bad. Uh, well, that's... That's She's so just ambly pushing around statues, just getting them all in a line. Just a random line. <laughs> <laughs> just as pushing a goat. Witch, pushing the demon lord, pushing Bahamut, pushing Tiamat. <laughs> so, yeah, just a random order. She puts them 1 through 28 in the order that you have posted them. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. She just... Since shuffles them into an orderly line. Actually, when you attempt to move the statues on your own, they do not move. Ah, damn. Even as a goat? Nope. Not Wait, even an inch. Oh, oh, fuck. We have to use magic, because what's-his-face used the shocking grass, and it moved. Um, in this case, uh, so he's gonna stand behind all the statues, um, and then he's going to use lightning lure on them, because that allows him to pull it, and he's gonna, like, pretty much pull them and push them away with, like, lightning lure and shocking grass, in order from the smallest to the tallest. Huh, that's very interesting. <laughs> um, as you attempt to do that, the statues do not move. Yeah. Huh, maybe we have to work together to move them? Well, no, I moved and I should move this one by myself. He goes back to the Storm Giant one and does Shocking Grasp on it and sees that it moves back. And then he walks over to the Warforged one and he uses Shocking Grasp on it and to see what happens. Now, when you Shocking Grasp the Storm Giant, what was your intent? To just see what would happen with my power going through it. Okay. And you have the same intent with the Warforged. Yeah. The Warforged moves ever so slightly backwards. Uh, Alright, so then... Okay, so here's what you can do. Uh, he'll tell Oriolander to take a step back. She's back in her humanoid form, and she will walk, and she'll take a step back. Um, And then he's going to... Let's see, what spell would be up here? Um, he's gonna use. Can I thaumaturge your statue? Thunder wave on almost everything around here. Heard me? What was that? I'm gonna use thunder wave on all of these statues. What is your intent while you do thunder wave? 
to uh, put as much magical power into them as possible. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's an automatic hit. I mean, well, like they have to make. Yeah, they damage. automatically pass. Um, so you do the thunder wave, and the statues move a significant distance, slamming against the curtain in the background. But there is no outward damage to them, and nothing else seems to transpire. Um, Kahalan's gonna climb onto the stage and try to move one with thaumaturgy. What is your intent while moving it? Uh, seeing that he's moving it with magic, I want to try moving it with magic. You just want to see if it'll move? No, I want to move it with magic. I know, but you want to see if using the magic will make it move. Oh, yes. It moves. Okay. Um, he's going to get like a little jittery, like, hey, look, I'm doing something. And then um, <laughs> seeing that there's a ranking order, he's going to... Uh, he, like, without asking him, he's just gonna casually move the Archface statue to the number one position, because obviously Archface are number one. She will, um, sh going on that the logic. Statue. So, okay, quick thing. So, you attempt to move the statue, the Archface statue, into the position of number one, because you believe the Archface are number one. Yes. Do you consult anyone else while doing this? I do not. I'm just the statue does not move. Oh. Uh, Kahalan will uh, have a face of disappointment that it does not move. Oh, I have an idea. What if we talk about which one is number one and it'll move there automatically? Uh, in that case, he's going to point over to the uh, Tarask and be. I haven't. I'm pretty sure that's one of the world ending creatures, so that's definitely the strongest. Kahalan. Do all that. Come That's on. definitely 28. Oh, in this, uh, number one would be the best, and number 28 would be the worst. So from, like, like worst to bad. Worst to good, or good to bad. Just depends on how you want it. Oh, it. number one is most evil. Yes. Oh. So he's going to point at the Tarask. You think Tarask is worse than... The literal dragon queen who wants to end the world. Mm. Yeah. Some say that Tarask, when they appear, are like world enders. Tiamat can't really do anything, can she? Um, <laughs> would Cahullin reasonably know anything about most of these things? Yes. Um, then he would, like, to scratch his head and say, <clears throat> Tiamat. Is she not one of your gods? An evil god. <clears throat> Kahalan's gonna nod and say, <clears throat> Then God is number one. Evil god. Because the hidden uh, gods are, you know, above. Yeah, I could agree with that. And. Oh, I guess. She will. So, who? So we are attempting to move Tiamat into position one, and everyone agrees. Yes. Yeah. So, Kahalan, you agree? Tiamat is evil, number one. Yes. Oleander, you agree? Tiamat is evil, number one. Yes. Naros, you believe that Tiamat is evil, number one? He wait. Actually, he pauses for a second. And goes no. Wait, no, 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 wait. The most evil thing... Is there a human, by chance? Like, a mortal... Like, there's elf, dwarf, an Empyrean, a solar... There are no humans. The only... The two humanoids are dwarves and elves, actually. He, uh... He thinks about it for a second. He goes... Well... Okay. Most of these creatures are in, like, legends. Like, we haven't actually seen any of them, like, appear in the most recent times, have we? Like, when's the last time there's been, like, a storm giant or, like, a Warforged Colossus wage around, right? So... The Great War. Yeah. In that and the Great ago. War was perpetuated forward by normal people like us. So, I mean... Oh, yeah, so he's always storm giants on Shendrick. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying here, perhaps 
the most evil one is man itself. To be 100% honest, this whole fucking thing is biased because it doesn't fucking matter. Anyone has the possibility for evil and anyone has the possibility for good. Exactly. So I don't understand this thing. So then it doesn't matter what order we put them in because everything can be evil and everything can do harm. There's no greater or end You're right. intention. So, so if and just... they're already in order. Right. So Boy, no... puzzle person. They're already in order. Yeah, so Nora's So just... you all agree that they are in order. Yeah. Yes. Um the statues go oh Kaholan, you have your reservations? Uh Kaholan does have reservations. He's gonna cross his arm and he's gonna need some convincing because he's not convinced. Cause to him, certain things are evil regardless. Because that's so Norris, what their story is. So Norris looks at him and goes let me ask you the difference. What's the difference between me and a storm giant if we both want to kill a person? It's the way that we do it, right? I shock someone until they die. It crushes someone. The intention is the same, and the result is the same. It's merely just if we have that intention to do so. Right? Hmm. He's going to grumble. Um, he's going to feel very bad about where the position of the archway is in there. But then he relents and says, okay, our tray can be pretty bad. <laughs> exactly. Everything here on this list can be pretty bad, and it can be pretty all right. Because I can't name the last time I've ever heard of a lich coming out of nowhere again, but I can name a couple of times where a couple of dwarves are trying to stole something, or an elf tries to stab me in the back alleyway. The point of this puzzle is that everything here can be equal, and our biased opinion shouldn't matter. It's the same thing with the scale. We're meant to be judges of some kind, I think, in this area. This is a preparation for us being judges. Um, Out of good. character, shout out to Jahi, because if we had to go through every single 28 and rank them, we would be here until midnight. Listen. <laughs> it would have been based, but you people decided on a, a very reasonable alternative, which is fine, and I like it. Um, the oh, that was so we were supposed so we were so we were supposed to so we were supposed to rank them. Yeah, I just wanted to see how fucking racist you people were, but oh, hence <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. why I said it doesn't fucking matter. Look, um, shout out to Chad Norris who thinks everyone can be a terrible person. Shout out to equalism. Um, Kahalan's gonna yeah, offer congrats on being the best anti-racist allies you possibly could be. Uh, the statues move themselves into a circle, forming neither a beginning nor an end. That makes sense. And the, ren the figures melt away, and the fluid from the figures, they were made of wax, rolls over your bodies and encases you, and you disappear. You awake? Is it? <laughs> yeah, or later, you want to resist, not about this. <laughs> If you want to resist, you are more than welcome to resist, but it it will be fruitless. <laughs> Nothing uh, is fruitless. Uh, is just like, shit. this is really unplet as wax fills his mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> as Cahullin is covered in this wax, he is offering a prayer up to his lady in shadows because uh, he feels bad for being a judge. Mm, like it. Okay. So, you now arrive in a library, and there are four pedestals in front of you, and there are a variety of books on a shelf, and the books are labeled Abjuration, Conjuration, Divination, Enchantment, Evocation, Illusion, Necromancy, Psionic, and Transmutation. And, unlike every other fucking puzzle, this was very straightforward, because there is a sign that says, which of these is the most evil? Oh, uh, I walked over to a chance. Yeah, that's what Orleander was gonna do as well. Cause Which literally one? we just saw how evil enchantment was on the train. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh he kind of goes to grab and he goes, I mean to be honest, any at least with necromancy you can just lose corpses and whatnot, but enchantment is really changing someone's very mind to go to contrary their own beliefs. It's a magic meant for enslavers, in my personal opinion. So, Orleander and Nauros believe that enchantment is the most evil. Now, 
What about the other two esteemed gentlemen? It's the same problem as before. You can do evil with all of them. You can do good with all of them. Oh, that's true. He puts it back and goes, yeah, they're all evil. I almost forgot that. <laughs> I'm, I just was reminded of the train, and I got a little too carried away. So yeah, they're all evil, Judge Lady, or whoever the hell's watching us do this all right now. Kahalan? Um, he is still in the middle of praying, but upon hearing that saying that all... Quick, no, are... no, wait, wait. How is abjuration evil? It's literally <laughs> protection. Well, you know that eventually high-level operation users can literally bound someone somewhere for thousands of years, right? <laughs> oh, I guess so. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an area of sealing and controlling things. It can be used to seal someone to somewhere unlikely. Um, yeah. So Kahalan takes a moment to ponder, uh, particularly remem remembering what his spell list is. And he's like, oh, I want to argue, but um, he counts on his fingers all the uh, spells that he has that inflict damage to other people or do things to other people and starts to sweat a little at he, as he uh, thinks about all the enchanting spells that he has. Um, and then he's just going to not say anything while putting his fingers behind his back. He will agree that all spells. He will agree that all schools can be evil. Okay, good. Anyone else have anything else to comment on? Nope. Okay. I'm I'm mildly irritated at the agnosticism, but it is morally true. So. <laughs> I've seen too many. I really I've seen too many videos going, this one's evil, no, this one's evil, no, this one's evil, and I'm like, they're all fucking evil. If yeah. you use them for evil, they're all fucking good, if you use them for good. And that oh, yeah. is a moral, like, middle ground, because yeah, it's true. everyone is going to have a different opinion on how you use it. Yeah, also, I, I think it's really probably hoping... best for the secret society that's made of Illuminati, where they don't just immediately be extremely biased and be like, oh, they're using, they're using enchantment magic? Blow it up? Yeah? Blow it up. Yeah, okay. I you know what? I'm really, really glad that you figured out what the whole point of the test was. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> I, I knew you people would do this. I'm so happy. So, the library that you are in with the books withers away into a buyersome night. And from the ebon black, there emerges a pale blue light and a ring of obsidian forms before you in your gaze. And above it, a single question. Should people be kept safe from things too dangerous from them to know or have? Uh, Kahalan will be the first to respond and say what yes is with absolute resolution. You are drawn into the gate and embraced into its light. Who wishes to go next? What's the question again? Should people be kept Should safe people... from things from too dangerous for them to know or have? Oh, uh, I believe everyone should have an opportunity for safety. Yeah. Uh, Norse goes, yes. I mean, obviously, there are just things out there that people would be better off not knowing. Okay, okay. And Galar? <laughs> sure. I'm going to need something a little more authoritative than that, my guy. <laughs> we deal with yeah. affirmative consent here. Yeah, I was literally about to say, we have affirmative consent here, and this Illuminati organization, we're not evil, okay? <laughs> I can think of a few things, yes. The light embraces a lot of you, and you now find yourselves... Okay, let me... I have to fucking fix this and make sure it works, because, uh... Can't see... Can't yeah, I know, I literally just said I was fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steven, for helping me shit on him. <laughs> 
I hate all of you. Okay, you can see it now, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Before you is a map of Harsarlona. It is a continent far to the northeast, the original homeland of humanity. This is actually Eberron canon, by the way. And personally ruled by despot dreamers known as the Inspired. As you look upon this, you suddenly become aware of a mission. A mission that has brought you to where you are today. An airship of yours, prior members of the Tontine, has crashed in Sarlona, and aboard it is an artifact that cannot be put into the hands of the rulers of Sarlona, known as Yazata and Fravashi. These red queens cannot be allowed to have these artifacts. They are ruthless, horrifying parasites that plague our dreams and our days. They must be destroyed. You are to be teleported in to Sarlona. Now, mind you, this is a one-way mission. Sarlona is warded heavily. The sisters are crafty at keeping themselves sequestered away from the rest of the world. You are to go in here, and you are to find this ship, and you are to slay anyone that gets in your way. Because this artifact cannot get into their hands. Slay as in kill? We gone back. Well, yeah. wait, 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 this was just supposed to be a birthday train ride. I, I didn't agree to any of this. You are going to be taken back into the minds of the Tontine who preceded you, those who gave their lives for this knowledge, and you will live what they lived, and you will understand what they did, and you will know what it means to be a member of our prestigious organization. You will do as they did. They killed with impunity. They slew without a thought, and they saved that which cannot be allowed to die. Are you ready to safeguard the forbidden? Um, Cahalan is simply going to hold his, uh, well, put a hand on his holy relic and um, steal his resolve to accept this mission. <laughs> Because he now, who else? Okay, uh, who else has their buy-in for this particular scenario? I mean, if it's to do good, and doing good is better than doing nothing, so okay. Yeah. Um. He just he's like um. Pretty much, uh, Nora smiles like not smiles, but he's just kind of like. I mean, I guess this is uh, I guess this is what I signed up for when the uh, my boss decided to die. So yeah, <laughs> decided to die. <laughs> like he's like, oh bother, it's time to die. <laughs> it's not that he was vaporized. Um, welcome. Um, we are currently at nine forty-five. Um, I said tenish. Um, this particular segment is actually relatively short. I think we could technically finish by ten thirty. Is that too late for everyone? Or do uh, we want to close up? Yeah, yeah. Early? Let's let's close up. Okay. Let me do the initial opening segment. It's just role play, um, and then we will end at ten, and then we'll go forward from there. Does that sound okay? Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Um, you are now playing your level twenty characters that you previously made. Um, I'm going to open up the next map, which is known as The Pillar. And I will drop your level 20 characters in here. And hopefully you can fucking see what is happening. Oh, Olivia, excellent art. <laughs> <laughs> Just what? the basest art. What's up? <laughs> can everyone see? It's a little doc. Oh, well, I could. Yeah, it's a little doctor. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's fucking hilarious. Ian, check your PMs. Okay, what did you just PM to me? What is this nonsense? Now, um, yeah, you're welcome to adjust that in post since we're not going to actually be doing combat. So, before you is the continent of Sarlona. You've landed upon a teleportation sigil, cusped on the coast. 
As you look down beneath your feet, the teleportation sigil, its ancient stone masonry, withers away into dust. They weren't kidding when they said it was a one-way mission. Before you are the lofty granite citadels, the sandstone mountains of western Sarlona rising to the great heights. In a moderate distance, perhaps a few miles away, a trek over the dunes are the bright red sandstone gate of a Dalquar city, the quarry, the inspired, Raedra, the foul, aberrant creatures of dreams that stalk our every night. What we'd like to do. Question, so we now, are- No, as I like to say, uh, you so are, right now, you are in the mind, you are basically living one-to-one what the Tontine was doing when they died. This is what okay. killed them. Okay, so we are not so we're so we're not like our characters in their mind, right? Yeah, no you're not. You are them. So just okay. pretend that you are them. Okay. Um, you're a crack team. You've been with each other for about 60 years. You've been working together for a very long time. And you get the feeling that this is your last mission. All right, group. Let's get to it. Um, are any of us frontliners, by the way? Uh, uh, I, think, gotta... I think we, uh, yeah, we have... Player. Okay, Steven's character is janky as fuck. So <laughs> how, about, how about we do this? We introduce our busted as fuck level 20 builds. Um, <laughs> let's, let's start with... We Steven's... were supposed to make them busted? Yeah, this is said try and fuck. kill them, so I said okay. Oh, I just made a level 20 road. Okay, if you want to go Same, back to the I just drawing made board. A, a level 20 artificer. Yeah, I, I <laughs> didn't think we were going to be playing them for super long, so I was like, well, they're going to die, so... Oh, yeah, that's why yeah. I said I just want to make something janky as shit and see if it works. <laughs> yeah, and I hate Steven for it. Okay, let's start with Steven. Well, Steven, well then, I know exactly what I'm going to make. Well, there you go. What? You can just... Give let's me another level 20 sheet. <laughs> you know I fucking hate you, right, Olivia? So you want me to delete Evangeline Selleck? Yeah, and I'll just have Eve Selleck just be a character in my backstory, and then the level 20 character is actually the Tontine person. Um, If you want us to go full fucking send, I'm going to DM you an idea, and you are <laughs> probably going to Guys, we don't have to. These characters are going to die. Like, it's yeah, fine. They, they, they're 100% going to die. I it's did fine. it just to see if the shit would work. Right. It's fine. That's why, like, I was like, I just made like a level 20 rope. It's just. Let's oh, yeah. I'm a level 20 rope. Yeah, I don't have to worry about like, it. I'm let's a level just, 20 rope. I'm pretty busted. All right. So um, let's start with Steven. Steven, describe your character, your Tontai member, his shtick, and why you're going to make me very, very, very mad. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So his name is Igneous Foebreaker. Um, he is a Simic hybrid. Um, he was an Eldrin just like um, Garel. And he actually is a Simic scientist himself and did research and experiments on himself to enhance himself in a few ways. Um, he is a two levels of paladin, one level of warlock hexblade in particular, and seventeen levels of draconic bloodline sorcerer. Uh, he I has hate you. <laughs> he has a legendary war pick, um, the ascendant dragon's wrath in particular. Uh, it has every single weapon you could want, but that one in particular does an extra three d six damage per hit on top of the one d eight. Um, so his shtick, he also has the robes of the Arch Magi, which gives you 15 base AC plus your dex and a red dragon mask, which if you're not wearing armor, lets you add your charisma. So his AC is 29. Um, and then because he's a sorcerer... Steven, he... what did I do to deserve this, Steven? <laughs> <laughs> like, why, did you, why did you... You might actually live. I hate you. You know that, right? You told me to try and beat them, so I said okay. Um, <laughs> so his shtick is he is a fire dragon, uh, a dragon bloodline. Um, so he's going to use quick spell to green flame blade, smack them in the face, 
and then green flame blade again for uh, whatever the hell ungodly demonic damage I told you earlier was in two rounds. Let's see if I can find it real quick. It's like a bajillion. <laughs> it's just so mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're per round, it's... Where did it go? Uh, okay, here it is. Um, it is so high. So, so high. for both hits, it's 18d8 plus 66 plus 24. You're a piece of shit, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's a level right. 17 sorcerer, so I have, like, all the spells. I hate you. All right. Who wants to go next and tell me how they're going to piss on my Cheerios? Um, uh, I'll go next. Oh, you can go. <laughs> go ahead, let's have a hear leader, it. Though, I want to hear it. I'm already afraid. <laughs> okay. So I've always said that if I was going to play a 20th level character, they would be 14 levels of one class and six of another. Who wants to guess? It's going to be a monk and then... Monk Pally, baby. Monk Pally. Oh, piece of shit! That's like a plus of 15 to everything! God damn it! <laughs> Which one has the tradition? Oh, that's fucking... shit. <laughs> At least you don't get that 7th level shit. But I'm still pretty mad, because that means I'm not going to be able to make them fail as safe. <laughs> Wait, my lowest cow, saving you? throw my lowest saving throw is plus six <laughs> and I haven't decided on paladin yet uh, if you're 14 ancients levels, would be fast if you can handle ancients is amazing because you get magic resistance um, you get it at I wouldn't seventh. get that you yeah. get it at seventh it's yeah. uh it's a 10 foot radius, so it gives it to all of us if we're I, in range. I wouldn't get it. It's at 7th. It's at 7th. Oh, you're 6, Pally. Mm hmm. Oh, I thought you were 6. Uh, pal- That's pretty uh, tough. Monk. That's a tough call. It's a tough call. All right. Hey, Olivia. Mm hmm. I know where you live. <laughs> all right. Um, Jahi, what are you thinking of now? Because I can only imagine that it's going to be something that's going to make me cry. Not really. It's just a swashbuckler rogue with a Vorpal sword, and um... oh god damn it! If you get a nat twenty, you instantly kill them. You son of a bitch. Yeah. Also, we we <laughs> have demon a... luck. Yes. Also, wait, uh, Steven, what what how, you, how many levels are you in, uh, Magic User? All 17. of them. Yeah, technically all of them. Technically okay. all of them. Paladin's half caster, so two half caster, one. Warlock, right. and then so seventeen. That, so. Okay, so then I was right. So then I also have a ring of spell storing, and I'm You're gonna full caster, and then I'm gonna have you put a hold person on that spell for me. Okay. Oh, you um, oh, uh, so you, you, you can treat your pally as a full caster, so you're actually you, just treat you yourself know, as a full caster. Do you want to know why I'm having him put hold person on there? Uh, for the auto crit. Yeah. And then he crits with the roll. Oh, no. <laughs> um, hey, wait. guess what? Wait. Do you remember how the sword says under the DM's discussion? I have to read this really quick. One second. Well, no. It says, I really like Oath of Vengeance. Well, they have legendary actions, so yeah, that's the best to thing. Sword. Um, well, they're not they're not immune to Vorpal swords. If their head is too big for the weapon, then yeah. But even if that's it says, the case, if they have legendary resistances and they have legendary resistances. Yeah. Oh, even if they have leg- oh, they have legendary actions. Okay. Wait, wait. But they do have some allies. Let me actually double check and see if their allies have legendary resistance. Because if hey. they don't, then your scam hey. is gonna work, and I'm gonna be hey. super fucking pissed. Oh don't, my god. Oh my god. Sword. Take wave. Listen, yo, yo, yo. Just take yo. wave. Do not if take I... wave. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Don't take wave. You don't look it up and take it. Hey, hey, take wave. I'm it's gonna go Oath of the, the Watchers. I'm gonna go Oath of the Watchers because oh. my channel divinity lets me fucking dunk on aberrations. Yeah, Wait, go are ahead. Are they aberrations or are they undead? They're aberrations. Watchers, watchers will, but even better, watchers will. All creature, As an action, you choose a number of creatures within 30 feet. 
for one minute, you and the chosen creatures have advantage on int, whiz, and charisma saves. Oh, that's actually a really good... That's a really oh, I'm good taking point. wave instead now. So, yeah, that is the <laughs> most busted weapon in the game. It's the most busted-ass weapon in the game, and no one knows about it. <laughs> what does All right. the crown do? Uh, that one's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's just... No, okay. it's like it forces them to fight you. I don't want to do that. Oath of the Watchers, yeah, baby. Yeah, it's like... Like, Max picked that for Steven's game, and I still don't know why. Because they thought it was cool and in character. Um, I, Glory okay, it's suboptimal, though. Uh, Glory has... You can channel the video to augment your athleticism. Aug nah. Advantage on strength that one's okay. <laughs> nah. Giving me and all my allies advantage on soft stat saves when I have... Y'all, my lowest saving throw is a plus seven. You're a piece of shit, and I fucking no. Hate sorry, you. sorry, <laughs> a plus eight. You're the worst person ever. You know that, right, Olivia? Okay, well, enjoy this level twenty combat where you get to beat the shit out of Yazana. Um, my lowest uh, saving throw is a minus one. What the? Is it int? Strength. Oh wow! No, I'm an eight caster. I'm a also, Ian, one. how many how many magic items do our level twenties get? <sighs> you get three, three legendaries. legendaries. <laughs> There's a reason why. No, I have oh, and items. ignore ig ignore any stupid um, requirements. Like, uh, like Wave has the really weird one where it says you have to worship a god of the sea, but if you read its splat block. It tells you that Wave is totally tight with you saying that you worship the god that it worships. So just fucking hand wave that, pun intended, and just go. I just wave in a Vorpal sword. Can you dual wield those? You can. Oh my god. Hundred percent can. <laughs> oh no. no. Not for me. They're not finesse. They're not finesse though, right? Well, no. Do, Vorpal you don't sword have can... to be finesse for you to dual wield. Yeah. Vorpal sword wait, wait. can be any sword. Oh my god, what is the monk exclusive item that allows me to deal 3d12 when I punch? No! 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 Don't you dare! <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 gloves of soul catching! Soul catching. I hate catching, you! Yeah. Fuck Actually, you! No wait, gloves me, of soul let catching! Me, and, let me, uh, and. Let me find this in Ian's thing. Oh wait, Olivia, let me find this in Ian in the Thomas staff with Ian. This is a build for a monk that I was going to use for another game. But you can take it and pretty much with it. Uh, I was gonna go with Kensei, but now I might. No, bitch. no. So listen, go Astral Physage, and with this build, you regain health every time you deal damage. <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna stick with Kensei and just pick up a, a tight ass weapon. Oh, hey, a uh, quick thing, uh, DK, can you cut the recording really quick? Thanks everyone for listening, but I want to hear the chicanery as you all scheme to destroy my life. 